Rong Ti's author, Alice Shake copywriting Zhang Shiyi's ex-boyfriend cheated, and the third party's uncle drove the Rolls-Royce Phantom, even the license plate number was arrogant. A few days after the breakup, Zhang Shiyi saw the consecutive Rolls-Royce Phantom outside the state banquet hotel. Thinking of the scumbag and the White Lotus both staying and flying, she feels distressed. Want to fight for less than 20 years? Dream. Still want to be a relative with me? Yes, then I will be your little aunt. Let you treat me respectfully when you are flattering. At that moment, Zhang Shiyi didn't know where his self-confidence came from, and tapped on the back seat window of the Rolls-Royce Phantom with a smile. The car window slowly rolled down, and the young man looked over, his eyes behind his glasses deep and charming. Zhang Shiyi's heart was shocked, this white lotus doesn't look very good, so my little uncle is so handsome? A few months later, Zhang Shiyi took the man's hand and sat affectionately in the back seat of the Rolls Royce. He saw the white lotus and the scumbag not far away, hooking his fingers at them with an arrogant expression. Don't you just come to say hello to the elders? Bai Lian Hua's face was earthy, moved slowly, and shouted uncle to the driver in the front row. Zhang Shiyi. Number I tried my best and got the wrong person? Number number next to this gentleman, sorry, we don't know each other now, let me go first. Number asterisk AI Jing vs Master BA asterisk doesn't ask for logic. Asterisk it can be seen from the copywriting that the female initiative is not pure, so if you cannot accept it, don't come in and find each other's unhappiness. Asterisk Weibo at content label, inspirational life of industry elites search keywords, protagonist, Zhang Shiyi, Xi'an supporting actor, Qin Xia one sentence introduction, the male lead shares a single tip every day brief comment on works finance reporter Zhang Shiyi was betrayed by his first love boyfriend when his career was on the rise, and transferred love to the niece of Minjiao Bank President Xi Yan. At the time when his feelings have been in vain for many years, Zhang Shiyi watched his first love boyfriend and his new girlfriend swagger through the market, and because of love and hatred, he determined to become their aunt. Impulsively, Zhang Shiyi embarked on a long journey of pursuing Xi'an. Xi Yan became fascinated by Zhang Shiyi, and Zhang Shiyi unknowingly did the fake show. However, when he was about to pierce the window paper, Zhang Shiyi suddenly discovered that Xi Yan was not a third party uncle and Shi Yan also discovered that Zhang Shiyi approaching him is for another purpose, and their feelings have moved into the unknown mist. The style of this article is relaxed and funny, the language is humorous, the characters are distinct, the relationship is close and ingenious, the rhythm of the article is brisk, the funny oolong is overwhelming, the emotional development is delicate, there are sweet and sad, it will be a pair of drama love that began because of oolong speaking. Zhang Cheng, late autumn, 5.30 in the afternoon. The sun was blocked by clouds at some point, and the sun was trapped in the thick clouds, struggling to show a few afterglows. Zhang Shiyi lay on the table for a long time, cold sweat on his forehead bursting out. The crisp phone bell was particularly awake in the mechanical and dense keyboard sound, pulling Zhang Shiyi's consciousness out of the chaos. Hello. Are you Zhang Shiyi Zhang reporter of Kaijing Weekly? Zhang Shiyi lay on the table to answer the phone, and said with a strong spirit, It's me, may I ask you? I'm Chen Sheng, assistant to the president's office of Minjiao Bank. A month ago, your magazine and Xi and Xi always booked an interview. The original date is tomorrow. Do you remember? Zhang Shiyi instantly became sober and straightened his back subconsciously. Of course she remembered it. She has heard the name she in too many times in this period of time. At the beginning, he became well known in the industry because he suddenly appeared in the financial industry as the son of Minjiao Group Shi Wengong. After studying in Europe, he took over Minjiao Bank, the private commercial bank of Minjiao Group. In the eyes of industry insiders at the time, this was not a good thing. After all, the bank's operating status was already in jeopardy. Some financial commentators even changed their serious words, thinking that this was Shi Wengong's use of a half-waste and non-waste subsidiary to play with his son. Ticket. However, 
after she and took the lead in Minjiho Bank, Rulai solved the problems of the bank's over-reliance on deposit and loan business and the highlighting of risks. It pointed to the risk management and control mechanism, and resolutely turned things around. The banquet on the 27th year of the year attracted the attention of the entire financial industry, and various honors came in. The invitation for interviews naturally also exploded the hotline of the president of Minjiho Bank. Although his fame has risen at first, there are very few interviews and reports about him. Even the most mainstream media can hardly get interview opportunities. If they can get only a few words, they will be enough to publish on the most eye-catching page. And this time, this is the interview that the editor-in-chief of the magazine has made an appointment for after spending a lot of effort to get through the relationship between all parties. When the editor-in-chief gave this task to Zhang Shiyi, the entire magazine was envious. How much attention the name Xi'an can attract in the media also represents how much attention the reporter who interviewed him can get. But now the call made Zhang Shiyi's heart hang up, and he asked carefully, is there any change? That's it. Chen Sheng said, the interview was originally scheduled for 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, but due to Shizong's personal work, there will be no time for tomorrow. Zhang Shiyi, after that. Maybe there is no time to squeeze in the next few days. Chen Sheng said, so if it is convenient for you, can the interview time be postponed to a week later? Can't. The financial interview pays attention to timeliness. After waiting for the interview a week later, the manuscript was returned for verification and then published. The day Lily was cold. It really won't work in a week. See if you can spare some time. Telephone interviews are also okay. Chen Sheng, I'm afraid this really won't work. I can't disclose the specific work to you, but it really takes a week to spare time at the earliest. What about tonight? Zhang Shiyi asked anxiously, are you free tonight? Only three hours, or two hours. Before Chen Sheng could answer, Zhang Shiyi gritted his teeth and said, one hour will do. You will be accommodating and accommodating. She has prepared for this interview for nearly a month, and has thoroughly understood the public financial dynamics in Qi Yan's hands, and hopes to earn fame with this manuscript this year. After Chen Sheng was silent for a moment, he lowered his voice and said, There is always a more important banquet tonight. Maybe, I just said maybe, maybe I might spare some time in the middle, you see. I'll wait. Zhang Shiyi agreed without saying a word. You give me the address, I can come and wait. Before hanging up the phone, Chen Sheng emphasized again, Ms. Zheng, I can arrange a place for you, but I can't make sure that there will always be time. You may run away. There was only a mechanical beep in the earpiece. After lingering in his ears for a long time, Zhang Shiyi boomed back to the table. The tension in his mind slowly dissipated, but what followed was a hollow heart melancholy. It was supposed to be happy to be able to have a banquet during the interview. However, the psychological sensitivity of the menstrual period was brought to the extreme by the loss of this moment. Zhang Shiyi's mood was definitely not good, and even a little sad. Today is the birthday of her boyfriend Yu Xing Zhou. It was their first birthday after they were together. Yu Xing Zhou also specially prepared a restaurant, booked movie tickets, and waited for her to celebrate together after get off work. Not only can she not accompany Yu Xing Zhou on her birthday, but she also drags her sick body to work, and may even run away. Zhang Shiyi turned his face over, closed his eyes and took a few deep breaths, and immediately turned off the computer and started packing things up. Kong Nan was originally immersed in writing. Hearing the movement of the opposite table, he raised his head and asked, What's the matter? Zhang Shiyi stood on the table for a while, and waited for the colic in his lower abdomen to pass, then said, The interview is ahead of schedule, I have to go tonight. Hey! Kong Nan only noticed Zhang Shiyi's face. Although her skin is white, there is no trace of bloodshot eyes at this moment, and it is almost transparent, and her morbidity is clearly written on her face, and her usual sense of agility is completely lost. Are you okay? If it doesn't work, 
I have to do it, otherwise what can I do? Zhang Shiyi walked to the printer, holding a stack of documents, and staring at the ground with drooping brows for a while. The printer moved silently, and the paper piled up in front of it in an orderly manner. I don't know whose cell phone rang, Zhang Shiyi suddenly raised his head, blinked and took out his cell phone. She should have called Yu Xing Zhou a bit, but just as soon as she turned out the address book, the other party called as if she was inductive. Baby, when do you get off work? I'll pick you up. Zhang Shiyi leaned on the printer and circled the layout with his fingers, I'm sorry, I'm going to interview temporarily. It may take about two hours. I shouldn't be able to eat with you. She thought for a while, and then said, I am not feeling well today, and maybe I can't go to the movies at night. Yu Xing Zhou sighed when he heard the words, and said, Well then, I'll find a friend to make do with it. Well, I'm sorry. Zhang Shiyi pursed his lips, his voice getting smaller, Will I make it up for you next time? Kong Nan waited for Zhang Shiyi to hung up the phone, turned his pen, propped his chin with the other hand, and said with a smile, Dove your boyfriend. Otherwise. Zhang Shiyi asked back, If you don't pigeon boyfriend, is it a pigeon feast? Oh, pitiful, your boyfriend was robbed of the opportunity to celebrate his birthday with you by a man who had never been masked. It's as if I'm going to accompany Xi'an for his birthday. Zhang Shiyi picked up the information and went aside to bind it, I am speechless myself. I don't even know what Xi'an looks like but I want to kill my boy for him friend. Kong Nan felt a little unbelievable, but having said that, does your boyfriend have no objection? What's your opinion on this kind of thing? Zhang Shu thought for a while and said, he didn't say anything, he understood it. Tisk, your boyfriend is too reasonable. Kong Nan said while turning off the computer, unlike my boyfriend, he is clingy to death. If I dove him, he will definitely be angry with me for whatever reason. In a daze, Zhang Shiyi lost consciousness for a moment. With a click, there was a tingling pain in her fingers, and she reflexively pulled her hand away to avoid being punctured by the stapler. But the sharp pain in the fingertips did not dissipate for a long time, and gradually spread to my heart. Zhang Shiyi held the documents in one hand and the mobile phone in the other, and he was in front of the printer for a while. I'm off work. Kong Nan got up with the bag and handed over a box of medicine. I think you have finished your painkillers. Take this and take some in advance. Don't faint during the interview. After speaking, she leaned closer and said in a low voice, If you screw up, some people who look forward to it will be so happy. Zhang Shiyi unintentionally responded to Kong Nan's reminder at this time. She was full of the words reasonable. Is you seeing Joe too reasonable? Moreover, she just said that she was not feeling well, and you seeing Joe didn't even ask her what was wrong. Once a certain idea is born, it will sprout in the heart uncontrollably. Zhang Shiyi sat down at the desk in a daze, and after hesitating for a while with his mobile phone, he sent a message to you seeing Joe. Zhang Shiyi, are you unhappy? You seeing Joe? You seeing Joe? No. Understanding, work is important, there will be many birthdays together in the future. You seen Joe, by the way, you said you were not feeling well, what's wrong? Are you sick? Zhang Shiyi exhaled. It seems that the menstrual period is easy to be sensitive and I think too much. Zhang Shiyi, nothing, just the period is uncomfortable tat you seen Joe, I love my baby. You seen Joe, where did you interview? I'll pick you up after it's over. The address given by Chen Sheng was Warner Manor in the western suburbs. It was during the rush hour and there was a traffic jam on the road. Zhang Shiyi suffered from abdominal pain. He transferred to the subway bus and took a taxi along the way. It took an hour to reach his destination. It is false to say that she is not upset in her heart. Along the way, she doesn't know how many times she silently scolded Shi Yan. The place Chen Sheng arranged for her was the rest area upstairs in the banquet hall. It is spacious, gorgeous, but empty, 
enough to magnify the loneliness of a stranger a hundredfold. Zhang Shiyi sat on the sofa, his legs dangling with the sound of the wall clock ticking, and he looked around over and over again to try to keep himself from falling asleep. However, the waiting time was too long. She drooped her head like a chicken pecking rice several times and almost fell asleep, until there was a movement of pushing the door, Zhang Shiyi sat upright, raised her head and looked at the door. Under the direct light, a man drove up, as the light got brighter and brighter. Zhang Shiyi looked at the factually, and became discouraged again. It was not Xi'an who came here, but his brother-in-law Qin Xiaoming, now the second in command of the Minjiao group. This person has been interviewed by Zhang Shiyi several times, so the two can be regarded as acquaintances. Qin Xiaoming also caught a glimpse of Zhang Shiyi when he came in. At first she straightened her back sharply, and her bright eyes could see the excitement in the dark. But the moment he stared at him, it dimmed again, and even the whole person was a little bit depressed. Qin Xiaoming paused, took the phone aside and held it aside, Why are you here? Zhang Shiyi answered truthfully, Let's wait for Xi, there is an interview today. Qin Xiaoming looked at her up and down a few more times, then looked at her pale face for a few more seconds, did not say much, just muttered it's so late and left. Zhang Shiyi sat for another two hours, which was like two long nights. Outside the window, I don't know when the rain started to fall, and the leaves were slapped, making a cold rustle sound. Occasionally, there will be movement from the banquet downstairs, although it is fine, but it can also be expected to be lively. In such a comparison, Zhang Shiyi felt that he was even worse. Just when she couldn't help her sleepiness, her eyelids were fighting up and down, the phone's ringtone finally rang. The crisp bell gave birth to an ominous premonition in this empty house. Miss Zheng, sorry, the banquet here is over, she always has other things next, so. Really. Zhang Shiyi was silent for several seconds before he said, I know, thank you. This interview is still too late. The moment Zhang Shiyi stood up, his mind was dizzy, he held the sofa to relax for a while before he stepped on high heels into the elevator. When she got outside the gate of Warner Manor, the rain had already sealed the door unsurprisingly. The rain was caught in the cold wind of autumn leaves, and it blew Zhang Shiyi's legs like a knife. She never thought that she would stay outdoors for a long time today. She wore a daily OL suit and skirt. She looked serious and serious, but the thin layer of transparent stockings was just a courtesy and was not worthwhile at all. The legs under the coat are bare, and the skirt can cover the knees. In this cold wind, they become more eye-catching than the luxury car at the door. Gradually someone came out, Zhang Shiyi stepped aside, and when he turned his head to look, she found that she had interviewed many people. It seems that this is a cocktail party in the financial industry. Subconsciously, Zhang Shiyi wanted to see if he might encounter Xi'an. But shocked, she didn't know what he looked like. Xi Yan's style is very low-key, and he rarely appears in public. Zhang Shiyi searched the internet when preparing materials, and only saw his unclear figure in some large panoramas, but no serious portraits. After a while, a female CFO of an internet finance company had a relationship with Zhang Shiyi. Seeing her standing here pitifully waiting for the bus, she offered to send her home, but Zhang Shiyi refused. Just now Yu Xing Zhou said that he would come to pick her up. It is 11 o'clock exactly, one hour before his birthday. She thought, no matter what, she still had to say happy birthday to him in person. The parking gallery on the first floor was spacious and clean, and the guests' cars drove away one after another, leaving behind shadowy tail lights. In a short while, there are not many people left in the banquet hall. Reporter Zheng A man stepped forward. Zheng Shiyi glanced back. He was an executive of a certain capital company who had only met once, but he always chatted with her on WeChat. The man smiled and stepped forward leaning very close, and he was drunk when he opened his mouth, are you alone? I'll take you home. This person usually looks like a person in social situations, but now he doesn't even greet him, 
his thoughts are clear. Zhang Shiyi, thank you, no need. The man got closer and took her arm, let's go, it's not easy to take a taxi because of the rain. Zhang Shiyi frowned and pulled away his hand, really no need, thank you, my boyfriend will be here soon. Hearing the three words boyfriend, the man looked at Zhang Shiyi, and when he met her, he knew that she was not evasive, so he turned around without saying a word. Next, another young man issued the same invitation to her. This is also a acquaintance, but Zhang Shiyi knows that he is really a rich second generation. It seems that today this is not a serious financial cocktail party. After dismissing the person with the same emphasis on boyfriend, Zhang Shiyi stood by the wall. Originally, she was caught by Shi Yan Pigeon today, and she felt uncomfortable. After encountering such things one after another, there was an unknown fire in her chest. The scene of her standing in the cold wind happened to fall in the eyes of Qin Xiaoming who walked out of the banquet hall. Qin Xiaoming moved a heart of compassion, and said to Shi Yan sideways, Isn't this Zheng Shiyi? The little girl is waiting for you very poorly at night. There are so many people here, it is inconvenient for me. You can find an opportunity to help give one away. Cheng. When Shi Yan looked over, the woman's cashmere scarf was wrapped a few times, wrapped around her chin, so that the face above seemed to be as big as a slap. Under the dazzling cold light, her face was a little pale, and the tip of her nose was red with cold, but her eyebrows and eyebrows were still delicate and delicate, with apricot eyes and red lips, bright and charming, standing there like a delicately carved porcelain doll. With a pitiful taste. When Zhang Shiyi looked up from the phone, a black Bentley slowly stopped in front of her. At the same time, there was a sound of footsteps behind him. Zhang Shiyi turned his head and met the man approaching for a moment. The man's eyes stopped for a while, and the crystal chandelier above his head cast an icy light on his gold wire mirror frame, as the snow chain swayed slightly on his cheeks. Reporter Zheng He stopped, the arc of the arms outlined in the suit showed a bit of distance, I will see you for a ride. Zhang Shiyi has never seen this man. But she was thinking. Why are the rich second generations so casual now? No thanks. The eyes behind the lenses were dazzled with dazzling lights, and the tails of the eyes were lifted upwards, which clearly should have been frivolous, but revealed a sense of pressure that was hard to ignore. So, under the biting cold wind, Zhang Shiyi met his gaze and added, My boyfriend will pick me up right away. Word by word, the three words boyfriend are emphasized. The subtext means, I am a person with a boyfriend. The corners of Shi Yan's mouth made an icy arc almost impossible to find, he put his hand into the bag, and walked away. The parker pulled the door, he bowed into the car, and Bentley galloped away. The car's tail lights dimmed into a blurred aperture in the rain screen, and gradually disappeared. Zhang Shiyi snorted coldly and twisted his chin. The rain stopped, but the banquet hall was gone. The parking staff and the doorman checked the surrounding facilities, and the cleaning staff took the mop to draw water marks on the ground, and a gust of cold wind blew over, rolling up a few dead leaves and floating to Zhang Shiyi's feet. She tightened her scarf again, and in this bleak night, she didn't know for a moment whether she should be angry with the Shi in that she had never met or be angry with Yu Xing Zhou. Finally, when the wall clock rang 12 o'clock, a familiar car slowly drove over and stopped at the door, and then Yu Xing Zhou got out of the car in the rain. Before he could speak, Zhang Shiyi ran over in the rain, threw himself into his arms, and held his arms to act like a baby. I'm almost freezing to death. Yu Xing Zhou persuaded her to get in the car, fasten her seat belt and rub her hair sideways, I'm sorry, the rain was too heavy and I didn't see the roadside clearly, took a wrong fork in the road and turned around for a long time before turning up. Hearing Yu Xing's whose gentle voice, Zhang Shiyi's grievance quickly disappeared, but his guilt overwhelmed and said softly, I just said casually, how are you doing today? Are you happy? Yu Xing Zhou held the steering wheel in his hand and sighed for a long time, my girlfriend doesn't accompany me, why am I happy? I'm sorry. 
Zhang Shiyi twisted his upper body and looked at him with a smile, who will accompany you on your birthday today? Yu Xin Zhou opened his mouth, and was about to speak, Zhang Shiyi rushed to ask, Su Feng. Okay. Su Feng is Yu Xingzhu's university roommate, and the two have been in contact since they graduated, and the relationship is very good. He is really getting more and more sassy. Zhang Shiyi said. Hey. Yu Xin Zhou glanced at her sideways, why do you say that? I used to think he was a straight man of steel. I didn't expect to use perfume now. Zhang Shiyi suddenly leaned close to Yu Xingzhu's neck and sniffed it hard. It has a very special taste and a good taste. Next time, help me ask if it is what kind of perfume, I think it should be suitable for me. Yet. Yu Xin Zhou nodded faintly, and changed the subject. How about today's interview? When he arrived in front of his boyfriend, Zhang Shiyi didn't want to carry it anymore, and said angrily, What kind of person is it? The interview that was originally scheduled said that the pigeons are pigeons. I waited eagerly tonight, but they still have a face. No one was revealed. Don't be angry. Yu Xin Zhou emptied a hand and rubbed Zhang Shiyi's hair again. Capitalists are inhumane. Don't be familiar with them. Hey. Zhang Shiyi was holding his hair, a little unhappy, why are you rubbing my hair today? It's so annoying. When he returned home, Zhang Shiyi didn't even have the strength to take a shower, nor was he in a hurry to remove his makeup. He kicked off his high heels and spread out on the sofa. However, at the moment when she was about to fall asleep, she suddenly remembered that she hadn't confirmed whether Yu Xin Zhou had arrived home safely, so she immediately got out of bed with a carp. No cell phone was found in his jacket and bag, Zhang Shiyi touched his shoulder bag again, but he still couldn't find it. Finally, he simply poured out everything in the bag, but still didn't see the phone. Zhang Shiyi sat on the sofa and recalled what happened tonight. According to her trajectory, the phone could not have been stolen. So, either it was forgotten in Warner Mountain Villa, or it was forgotten in Yu Xingzhu's car. The mobile phone is too important to Zhang Shiyi's life, there is no way to rest assured unless she finds it, so she immediately found the iPad to locate the mobile phone. A few minutes later, she saw that the red dots on the map became clearer and clearer, but her mind became more and more confused. Her mobile phone appeared at the Zhongcheng First People's Hospital at this time. Really stolen? Impossible, she obviously got into Yu Xingzhu's car with her mobile phone, and hadn't been anywhere during that time. The only explanation now is that she left her mobile phone in Yu Xingzhu's car, and then Yu Xingzhu went to the hospital at this moment. But why did Yu Xingzhu go to the hospital at this time? He has a sudden illness? Or was there a car accident? Zhang Shiyi didn't dare to think about it, and immediately got up changed a pair of pants and went out. It was still windy and rainy outside. Cars rushed across the road. Zhang Shiyi could not book a car without a mobile phone. He stood in the cold wind for more than 20 minutes before waiting for a car. Late at night, the city hospital was still brightly lit, and the smell of disinfectant water filled the air with cold wind and rain. Zhang Shiyi opened the car door, and the rain fell on her face, making her face muddled. She held the umbrella, wiped her face casually, looked around, and saw Yu Xingzhu's car at a glance. But Yu Xingzhou was not in the car, and Zhang Shiyi didn't know how he would find Yu Xingzhou in such a big hospital without a mobile phone. The rain is so strong that the umbrella can't cover it. Zhang Shiyi's lower abdomen is getting heavier and heavier. He is sweating on his back and his feet are floating. Step by step, he walks to the outpatient building. His trouser legs are getting soaked and his actions become more and more difficult. Suddenly, she stepped on a puddle, staggered, and then fell to the side. Fortunately, there was a car parked next to her. Although she was a little painful when she fell, she wouldn't fall to the ground full of water. Zhang Shiyi slowly stood up, looked down at the car sign, and immediately bounced away agilely. This is a Rolls Royce with consecutive license plates. I can't afford it. P. 
people who don't know thought she touched porcelain. Rubbing his wrists, Zhang Shiyi continued walking forward holding the crumbling umbrella. However, when she was less than 10 meters away from the outpatient building, her footsteps suddenly stopped. Although it was raining heavily, she could still clearly distinguish that the man who walked out slowly was her boyfriend. But her boyfriend was hugging a woman at this moment. The woman was still wearing Yu Zingshu's coat. Zhang Shiyi bought that coat. The thoughts in his mind sprouted wildly and grew savagely. There was only a film in front of the facts, but Zhang Shiyi was still trying to comfort himself. It should be just a friend. Yu Xing Zhou had a good personality. It was normal to come to the hospital to see friends at night, and they didn't have any close contact. But the next second, the woman hugged Yu Xing Zhou. Yu Xing Zhou raised his hand and rubbed her hair, with a helpless smile on the corner of his mouth. For an instant, Zhang Shiyi felt the comb like raindrops plunge into her flesh and blood, and it was freezing to the bone. After hugging for a while, the woman raised her head, and Luo looked at Yu Xing Zhou with rain. The two of them were close together, their noses could be entangled. At the distance of Zhang Shiyi, she could only see what the woman said intermittently with her mouth open, and Yu Zing's whose expression seemed to become increasingly unnatural. Immediately, the woman pads her toes and kisses it. Zhang Shiyi closed his eyes abruptly as if seeing something dirty, and did not open it for a long time. You seen Zhou, when I opened my eyes, you pushed her away. You push her away, and I will listen to you to explain. I don't know if a few seconds have passed, Zhang Shiyi frowned tightly and opened his eyes bit by bit, and the picture in front of him was a little bit clear. Not only did Yu Xing Zhou not push the woman away, he was still responding to her kiss. His slender hand slowly lifted up and hugged her waist. The rain is getting bigger and bigger, it seems to annihilate the city. The night sky seemed to be a movie screen with the lights turned off, and Zhang Shiyi had a lot of past scenes before his eyes. At first, she didn't like Yu Xing Zhou. At that time, she was already in her senior year, and her roommates said that she found that a lower level schoolboy was particularly handsome, so a few people ran to the playground like paparazzi. It's okay, not as exaggerated as they said. Zhang Shiyi thought so, and soon forgot this person. But Yu Xing Zhou fell in love with Zhang Shiyi at first sight. Twenty-year-old boys always pursue passionate and straightforward pursuits, send flowers, confess, and blatantly sing love songs to her at the party, full of vigor. But Zhang Shiyi didn't eat this set, flowers, and gifts. She turned around and left while singing. At that time, many people thought that Yu Xing Zhou should not last long, including Zhang Shiyi, who also thought that he was no different from the boys who had been hot for three minutes. However, Zhang Shiyi did not expect that until she graduated and entered the newspaper to become an intern reporter, Yu Xing Zhou did not give up on her either. After leaving the campus, Zhang Shiyi got up early every day to apply for topics, grab clues, and rushed to do interviews on Financial Street. He stayed up late at night to write press releases. With a poor intern salary, he was constantly worrying about tens of billions and hundreds of billions of projects. The discomfort with social life caused Zhang Shiyi to be depressed for a long time. At this time, Yu Xing Zhou became the only color in her life. Zhang Shiyi still remembers that she said on the phone the day she promised to be Yu Zingshu's girlfriend, but Yu Xing Zhou, a stupid boy, was excited to take a taxi from school to see her immediately, just for a legitimate hug. In fact, most of my friends did not understand Zhang Shiyi saying that besides his white face, is there anything else that stands out about Yu Xing Zhou? The family conditions are average, and there are no prospects for work. You can definitely find better ones. Zhang Shiyi still remembers his answer at the time, I think he is very sincere. What a rare quality. But why do people change so quickly? The focus of her sight once again gathered on the steps of the outpatient building, and the few nurses who hurried out saw the kissed and emotional too, and smiled with envy. It's a good couple. Excessive sensibility is true. Indifference is true. The habit of rubbing hair is real. 
Only Su Feng is fake, maybe even the faint perfume belongs to this woman. Zhang Shiyi felt that he was a joke when he came to the hospital in the rain late at night. Reason told her that she should not be an outsider at this time, and she should step up to defend her ownership. But she couldn't move her legs, and she didn't want to stage a drama in the hospital where people came and went. Her self-reliance on identity does not allow her to make herself so embarrassed. After watching quietly for a while, Zhang Shiyi touched his face, the rain in his hands, I wonder if there were tears in his hands. She walked to Yu Zingshu's car, took off the bracelet that Yu Xing Zhou gave her, hung it firmly on the door handle and turned and walked into the rain screen. The rain was pouring at night, and the silver thin chain was teetering to be washed by the rain, but it was still glowing with icy spots of light. It looked like Zhang Shiyi's talking eyes, and he said coldly, I have seen everything you do. The cold wind blew over, reminding the person standing at the door that it is time to leave. When Yu Xing Zhou looked at the rain like a curtain and was hesitant to rush into the rain, Qin Lazi took out the umbrella from his bag, opened it and held it over his head. After staring at each other, Qin Lazi smiled, took his arm, and the two of them walked to the parking place together. The two walked for several minutes at a distance of 10 meters. When they stood in front of the car, Yu Xing Zhou whispered, Then, I'm going home. Qin Lazi held his arm without letting go, lowered his head and leaned on his chest, and said coquettishly, Why don't you stay with me for a while, I'm afraid I will find that everything is a dream at dawn. Yu Xing Zhou licked the corners of his lips, not knowing where to put his eyes. After a while, he still raised his hand and hugged Qin Lazi's back. The two looked crowded under a lady's umbrella, and the night rain floated to Qin Lazi's neck. She shivered because of the cold, but she still did not let go. Cold. Yu Xing Zhou asked. Qin Lazi hugged Yu Xing Zhou more tightly, it won't be cold with you. Yet. Yeah. Yu Xing Zhou said, I really want to go back, and I will go to work tomorrow morning. Hearing this, Qin Lazi let go of Yu Xing Zhou, and when he looked up at him, there was misty water vapor in his eyes, and his whole body was as weak as if the rain could shower her even a little bit more. She hooked Yu Xingzhu's little finger with her little finger and shook it gently, Xing Zhou, I hope you will consider what I said today. I can give you what she can give you, and I can give you what she can't give you. After speaking, she let go and whispered, my uncle is still waiting for me, I'm leaving now. Yu Xing Zhou fixedly watched Qin Lazi get into a Rolls Royce, his eyes flickered under the street lamp above his head, and his Adam's apple moved slightly. He turned and walked slowly towards his car. In the night, his vision became blurred, he took out the car key, pressed the unlock button, and reached out to pull the car door, but he touched a hard object. When he saw what it was, his heartbeat suddenly accelerated, his blood surged, his consciousness went blank for an instant, and his nerves were about to burst nervously. It's 3.45 in the morning. The rain should have stopped, and the sound of the whistle on the road was sharp and clear. Zhang Shiyi was lying flat on the bed, looking at the ceiling with his eyes open, his head buzzing in chaos, but his heart was empty, as if he had been pumped out of oxygen. After she came back, she didn't idle, went to the utility room and took out a cardboard box, and put all the things Yu Xing Zhou gave her these days. Some used items could not be returned. She made a list and put them in the box, intending to discount them all. Including Song Leland's concert tickets, originally intended for two people to see together, now they can only return the other ticket to him. But at this moment, she just needs to wait quietly for Yu Xing Zhou to come to her. Not long after, the doorbell sounded. Based on what Zhang Shiyi knew about him, he must be covered with rain now, standing pitifully outside the door, waiting to explain to her, and beg her for forgiveness. She even expected the line, and she said, Listen to me. After that, he will red eyes and pull the corner of her clothes like he had confessed to her at the beginning. Thinking of this, Zhang Shiyi laughed himself. It feels like all this is a dream. When she got up, she didn't have much strength, but she still tried her best and appeared in front of Yu Xing Zhou. 
The light in the corridor only lit one, dimly lit, but it was enough to illuminate King Yuzing's whose face. He was holding an umbrella with blue lace in his hand, and his hair was soft, but it was clean and there was no water stains on his body. It's different from Zhang Shuyi's imagination. He arched his shoulders, lowered his head, lifted his eyes to take a look at Zhang Shuyi, and then immediately lowered his eyes. Book Intent Zhang Shuyi lifted his chin, and when he was about to say something he had rehearsed that he would never forgive, he heard the other person say, Let's break up. Zhang Shuyi I love you very much and want to be with you forever, but this kind of life is too tiring, I can never see where the node is. I want to buy a small house in this city is a luxury, I... Wait. Zhang Shuyi returned to his senses and interrupted him quickly, what do you mean? Calligraphy. He frowned, gritted his teeth, and said what was in his heart, we must be more realistic. Her family is not ordinary. My younger uncle drove Rolls Royce, even the license plate number was serial number. This is the only one in the entire Zhongcheng. With money and power, I also want to be in the same state as King Yun will be twenty years later, I, I think we are still suitable to be friends. Zhang Shiyi almost didn't come up in one breath, only one fingernail was left before his death on the spot. So in the end, she was thrown preemptively before she spoke? You seen Zhou? Zhang Shiyi suffocated his breath, clutching the door frame tightly, saying word by word, is my phone brought here? Bring it, bring it up. You seen Zhou still didn't dare to look at her, and after a quick glance at her, he lowered his head and took out the phone. Zhang Shiyi grabbed his mobile phone, took a deep breath, and kicked out the cardboard box and you seen Zhou. Who the wants to be your friend? Be your ancestor. The sound of the door slammed throughout the corridor, and Zhang Shiyi could feel the vibration of the door panel even when she leaned on the door panel, and she followed her chest again and again to ensure that she would not carry it back in one breath. After a while, there was a sound of footsteps outside the door. Zhang Shiyi couldn't hold back the last trace of expectation, expecting Yu Xing Zhou to be a man. So she turned around and looked through the cat's eyes, but saw that Yu Xing Zhou had walked two steps holding the cardboard box, and suddenly squatted down again, put the cardboard box on the ground, and then buried her head and rummaged in it. The box was filled with things from Yu Xing Zhou, including ceramics, decorations, books, and many scattered gadgets. After a while, he took out something and put it in his jacket and bag, but dropped the box and went into the elevator. No way. Zhang Shiyi's mind was stunned, and he blinked vigorously. If she read it right, what Yu Xing Zhou took away was the only valuable gold brooch in that box. At this moment, anger was overwhelming, drowning all hypocritical emotions, shredding the filters of the past few years, and tearing the worst side of Yu Xing Zhou's quality and spreading it out in front of Zhang Shiyi, not allowing her to have any more. Nostalgia even the most memorable memories, vanished in a flash and turned into flying debris that ignited anger. Zhang Shiyi threw himself on the bed and beat the pillow over and over, still unable to erase the images in his mind. Every time I close my eyes, I think of Yu Zing's who's as if being wronged with her, which makes Zhang Shiyi open his eyes alive until dawn. But she only took a half day off, and in the afternoon she went to the company with her makeup. Scumbags can be lost but performance can't be lost. There is a call from Minjiho Bank, and the character interview will be postponed to 3 o'clock in the afternoon next Thursday. The editor-in-chief Tang Yi called her into the office and looked at the computer without looking up. But it's better to change the topic, you give me a new outline as soon as possible. Oh. Tang also heard Zhang Shiyi's lifeless voice and raised his eyebrows, this is a common thing. You have a smooth journey just because you are beautiful. Do you know how many reporters make ten calls? One is always in a meeting, three are always perfunctory, and two are always inconvenient for interviews. You can breathe now, what will you do later? I didn't hold my breath. I have to thank Xi'an for talking about it. Zhang Shiyi said in a calm tone. Otherwise, how could I find my boyfriend, oh no, 
the ex-boyfriend cheated on it. What? Become an ex-boyfriend. Tang Yi seemed to be shocked, but when he said the last word, the ending sounded upwards and his brows rose, and he almost wrote the words it's so funny on his face. Zhang Shiyi. Ouch. Tang Yi covered his mouth in order not to let himself go too far, should I be so happy? Zhang Shiyi didn't have the strength to put on an expression, but said lightly, fortunately, it's just the crow's feet that laughed. Tang Yi instantly changed his face, turned his head to look at the computer coldly, and pressed his to the end of his eyes, I told you a long time ago that your boyfriend is not good. What kind of conditions do you match? Then what kind of boyfriend do I have to match? Zhang Shiyi's mind reappeared last night's picture, and said to himself, We're someone with a Rolls Royce. Can't you? Tang Yi stood up and stuffed a document into her arms, You have knowledge, good looks, and a decent job. You have a boundless future in the future. Why don't you deserve it? This unlimited future was actually Tang Yi's plan for Zhang Shiyi long ago. It was she who dug out Zhang Shiyi from the newspaper office in order to create a human-shaped signboard exclusively for Kaijing Weekly. Zhang Shiyi graduated with a major in journalism from one of the top financial universities in China. He has excellent professional skills from a college background, and the little girl can still endure the hardships of a Times reporter. The most important thing is that Tang also feels that she has an extraordinary beauty. Even in serious industries, beauty is a particularly eye-catching medium. If it is played together with the education and ability cards, it will be Wang Zhan. Therefore, she felt that after Zhang Shiyi published a few high-profile works, Kaijing Weekly would give her a boost. The two complemented each other and made her a famous reporter in the circle. In the future, walking in the financial circle would be like entering no one. It will bring greater benefits to the magazine. Oh. Zhang Shiyi was too lazy to discuss this issue with Tang Yi, looking down at the things in his hands, what is this? There is a financial summit in the afternoon. If you can't die, go and follow the clues. Tang Yi waved to her, indicating that she could leave, there is also an interview with Minjiho Bank next week, so be prepared. This is the advantage of having an unreasonable boss. Zhang Shiyi didn't even have time for hypocrisy. He went to the bathroom to patch up his makeup and hurriedly left the company. The summit was held in the Zhongcheng New Financial Center. It is located on the remote Fourth Ring Road. It was completed last year. The surrounding area is still under development. There are almost no pedestrians on the road except for cars. But this place is not unfamiliar to Zhang Shiyi, one is because she often comes and goes here for interviews, and the other is because Yu Zing's whose working place is here. In the past, if she had time, she would come here to wait for Yu Xing Zhou to get off work, and then the two went to dinner and watch a movie together and then went to her favorite dessert shop to buy small cakes. So now that Zhang Shiyi listened to the entire summit, he subconsciously abducted into that dessert shop. When she recovered, the clerk was already greeting her warmly. Zhang Shiyi took out the egg she usually buys from the cabinet. The two red grapes adorned with yellow cheese looked like Yu Zing's Hu's hateful face. The clerk stood aside watching Zhang Shiyi's expression of killing his father and enemies to an egg tart. Miss, that. The clerk said cautiously, it's the afternoon, buy one egg tart, get one free. As soon as the voice fell, a welcome rang at the door, and the clerk hurriedly went to greet the new guests. And Zhang Shiyi was still staring at the egg until a familiar voice sounded behind him. She turned her head abruptly, catching Yu Zing's Hu's eyes off guard. Yu Xing Zhou was stunned for a moment, standing at the door for a moment not knowing whether he should go further. After a while, he turned his face away, pulled the woman beside him and said, Come and buy it tomorrow. Only then did Zhang Shiyi notice the woman he was holding, the one he saw in the hospital last night. Didn't you even do it? Came to break up with her last night, and today the two of them came out hand in hand to swagger through the market? No. Although Qin Lazi saw Zhang Shiyi, she didn't plan to leave, I'm used to eating here, 
and I feel uncomfortable if I don't eat for a day. She walked to Zhang Shiyi's side, took out a whole box of egg tarts sideways, and glanced at Zhang Shiyi as she closed her hands. The look in her eyes clearly means that she knows who Zhang Shiyi is from Yu Xing Zhou, but she has no consciousness of being a third party, and even reveals a sense of pride, as if someone rushed into the banquet with bare feet and spit in the food. Show off to everyone that she got the whole table of dishes. Zhang Shiyi's eyes suddenly hurt her temples. Okay, I will bear it. She threw away the egg and left the dessert shop without looking back. But when she stepped out of the gate, she suddenly thought of something, so she immediately stopped and turned back, just when Qin Lazi was looking at her with the eyes of a winner. Zhang Shiyi looked down, and saw that the shiny gold thing on her scarf was indeed the brooch that Yu Xing Zhou took away last night. Although his expression was calm, it seemed that thousands of hot coals were crushing Zhang Shiyi's chest back and forth, and his anger was gushing out any time and anywhere. After walking a few times, Zhang Shiyi finally couldn't help it and kicked on the big tree on the side of the road. Dasha was terrified at the time, and had never seen such an angry woman. Zhang Shiyi lowered his head, his chest was violently up and down, and he clearly felt his cheeks become hot from anger. The noise of cars on the road kept turning, she tilted her head slightly and saw Yu Xing Zhou and Qin Lazi walking out. Yu Xing Zhou held the dessert box in his hand, and Qin Lazi hugged his arm and sat on his co-pilot. Didn't you learn to walk upright just after being released from the zoo? Zhang Shiyi stared in that direction, until his teeth were sore, he opened his legs and walked forward. She didn't know what she was doing. Without taking a taxi or going to the subway station, I walked aimlessly on this wide and somewhat lonely road. I don't know how long it has been, the sky is getting dark, and Zhang Shiyi stopped at an intersection to stop a taxi. As she looked towards the middle of the road, a car parked on the opposite street caught her attention by surprise. As her eyes gradually focused, the dazzling Rolls Royce logo seemed to glow with gold. The license plate number is the string she saw in the hospital last night, and it is also the continuous number plate in Yu Xing's Hu's mouth. This is the only one in Zhang Cheng. A thought flashed through Zhang Shiyi's mind, and what Tang Yi said to her today. You have knowledge, good looks, decent work, and a boundless future in the future. Why don't you deserve it? The cold wind blew on his face wantonly, but his thoughts surged in his mind like a heat wave. Not too sensible, not too calm, but in only three seconds, Zhang Shiyi made a decision to subvert her future life. Some people, if you don't let them pay for what they do, they won't think you are free and easy, they will only think you are stupid. Don't you want to fight for less than twenty years? I think too. Don't you want to lean against the mountain? I think too. Even if you can't make you pay you have to call me respectfully when you flatter in the future. When thinking of this, Zhang Shiyi was already standing by the car. She looked at herself reflected in the car window and brushed her hair. Although the face in the mirror was a little haggard, it was not a different kind of charm. It was different from Zhang Shiyi's usual delicate and charming, and there was a pitiful and pitiful sense of vulnerability at this moment. She raised her hand and knocked on the car window. There was no movement inside for a long time. When Zhang Shiyi almost thought that there was no one in the car for a long time, the windows finally rolled down slowly. At first, Zhang Shiyi only saw a pair of gold-framed glasses with snow chains. Afterwards, the whole face slowly became intact, followed by a in Zhang Shiyi's heart. Anyone who has seen this face will not forget it in a short time, and Zhang Shiyi naturally remembers that this is the person who asked to send her home at Warner Manor last night. It's just that she didn't expect that Qin Lazi looked at a face with a clear soup and water, that his little uncle was actually in such a hue. It didn't seem to be much accident that the man was knocked on the driving window, he just glanced over slightly. Although embarrassing, Zhang Shiyi felt that it was not entirely a bad thing. At least, didn't he mean something like that last night? So Zhang Shiyi bent over and whispered, Sir, my cell phone is dead and I can't get a car. Can I borrow your cell phone to make a call? Shi Yan didn't even turn his head, 
just turned his face slightly, and glanced at Zhang Shiyi sideways. As he stared at each other, Zhang Shiyi couldn't see what he meant, so he was heartbroken and said, Or, you can take me for a ride. Shi Yan stared at her for a while. His eyebrows are narrow and long, and the cold texture of the glasses just suppresses the frivolousness of the raised eyes. After a few seconds, Shi Yan withdrew his gaze slowly. My car doesn't carry a boyfriend's woman. Zhang Shiyi. The vehicle just fell out in front of her and galloped towards the highway. Clouds glowing with orange light surged over the horizon, and the passage of time became visible to the naked eye. The editorial department of the magazine lit up a number of direct lamps, everyone was immersed in the sound of keyboards one after another, and even the air was lingering with the urgency of the deadline. At the end of Zhang Shiyi's manuscript today, the feeling of ignorance dissipated, and he accepted the fact that the man who tried to strike up with her last night was Xiao San's uncle, and he rejected his strike up with a grudge today. It's a bit grudge. Zhang Shiyi didn't know that the corners of his lips showed a strange arc, staring at the screen, typing quickly with both hands, muttering words in his mouth, it seemed that he was full of thoughts and inspiration. However the wealth management companies of the banks are expected to enter new financing plans next year. The China Banking and Insurance Regulatory Commission urged the scumbags to hurry up and fertilize their frustrations. The minor menstrual disorders were full of acne and got onychomycosis. Hey! Kong Nan, who was sitting at the desk next to him, squinted his upper body and came over. After a glance, he asked, what are you writing? Zhang Shiyi returned his soul, blinked, glanced at the screen, and calmly deleted the line. It's nothing. She closed the computer and looked up at the glow outside the window, lost in thought. After writing this afternoon's summit draft, Zhang Shiyi did not go home from get off work, and continued to stay in the office to write an interview outline for Xi'an. Frustrated in love, always have to be proud of the workplace. Zhang Shiyi must come up with a stunning manuscript that shocked Tang Yi, lest Tang Yi always feel that she is broken in love like a poor worm. Zhang Shiyi is not only strong in revenge, but also strong in self-esteem. In a blink of an eye, on Friday, Zhang Shiyi took the recording pen and notebook to the headquarters of Minjiao Bank. Like other office buildings, the reception desk on the first floor of the Minjiao headquarters requires visitors to register their identity. The office building faces well, and the sun is shining right in, spreading on the smiling faces of the three men and women in formal clothes at the reception desk, bringing a few scents of fireworks to the cold building. The security guard stood aside, glanced at the press card hanging on Zhang Shiyi's chest, and said casually, Are the reporters of your magazine so beautiful? Zhang Shiyi smiled and even responded to this compliment. But the moment she picked up the pen, her eyes flashed. Su Yuling? Why is Su Yuling's name on the register? Although the name is ordinary, it should not have the same name and surname. After all, the column for the purpose of visit is interview. Speaking of Su Yuling, Zhang Shiyi has been at odds with her since the first day when she joined the magazine. In the past two years, there have been no incidents of looting information sources. So Zhang Shiyi saw Su Yuling's name on the register, and noticed that the visit time was 10 o'clock this morning, and suddenly he had an ominous premonition in his heart. Zhang Shiyi immediately ran towards the elevator. In the elevator, time seemed to be pulled very slowly. Although Zhang Shiyi was standing straight, his hands clenched into fists unconsciously, and his heart was hanging in his throat. Half a minute later, the elevator arrived and A Ding pierced Zhang Shiyi's piece. As soon as she looked up, she saw Chen Sheng passing by the corridor in front of her. Secretary Chen. Zhang Shiyi stopped him and stepped out of the elevator in three steps and two steps. I am Zhang Shiyi, a reporter from Kaijing Weekly. I have an appointment with the president for a personal interview at 3.30 this afternoon. Chen Sheng frowned slightly, with doubts on his face, aren't you okay? When Zhang Shiyi heard it, the remaining half of his heart was cold. As expected, Su Yuling was stunned. Sure enough, Chen Sheng immediately said, 
your colleague has finished the interview. Zhang Shiyi's mind was half empty in an instant. Chen Sheng glanced at his watch and added, she came in the morning, but she always happens to be free. Zhang Shiyi. If the will be silenced, the beep in her heart is now as high as annoying to the people. But what can she do? Shi Yan was invited by Kai Jing Weekly, so he would not care about which reporter came, let alone bear the consequences for their internal cares. And the manuscript must be published. The editor-in-chief can at most say that Su Yuling is not kind, and it is impossible to withdraw the Shi Yan character interview for this so-called moral sense. Zhang Shiyi nodded, clenched his teeth, and forced a stiff smile. Sorry, we didn't communicate well internally. In fact, Chen Sheng is a human being who can't see the twists and turns, but it is better to do more than less. He nodded in accordance with Zhang Shiyi's words, Excuse me, please take a trip. No Zhang Shiyi's voice suddenly stopped, and the word trouble was not spoken behind, and he looked at the opposite side in a daze. Ten meters away from her. The door of the president's office automatically opened to both sides, and the six assistants and secretaries sitting at the desk outside the door got up one after another, and a young woman in professional attire who was crossing the road holding a pile of documents also immediately stepped aside. At the spot where the light focused, the man wandered over, his expression calm, silent, yet he took everyone's attention away. When the line of sight flicked over at random, the frame of the mirror reflected cold light dots, embossing on his silhouette, and the feeling of repelling him thousands of miles away spontaneously emerged. The windows are bright and clean, but surprisingly quiet. Zhang Shiyi blinked, making sure that he was not dizzy. The man who appeared in front of him was the little uncle she had been looking for for a week. But at this moment, she didn't have the kind of joy that didn't take any effort at all, but felt that she was struck by lightning. Seeing him in this place, you can almost conclude that this person is the banquet she has been talking about for half a month. No wonder Yu Xing Zhou had to run with others, because they had such a background behind them. This is a coincidence. This fate is really amazing. If Zhang Shiyi hadn't refused him to strike up a conversation and ran to take the initiative to strike up a conversation with him. When the thunder and lightning flashed in Zhang Shiyi's mind, Chen Sheng had already walked to Shi Yan and whispered something in his ear. Shi Yan raised his eyes and looked over, colliding with Zhang Shiyi's somewhat confused, bewildered and awkward gaze. Zhang Shiyi's expression was a bit stiff, but he couldn't take his gaze back naturally, so he looked straight at Shi Yan. It only looked at each other for a second or two. Regardless of Zhang Shiyi's expression at the moment, Shi Yan ignored the information in her eyes, and calmly retracted his gaze and walked towards the elevator. Zhang Shiyi stood still, frantically brainstorming, and quickly set out two feasible directions for himself. First, she strayed away and pretended that nothing happened. From then on, the three words Zhang Shiyi disappeared into the world of Xi'an. Second, the elementary school teacher said that one cannot give up any opportunities, and must face difficulties. She will do interviews, and so will my little aunt. The body seems to have made a choice in advance instead of the brain. Zhang Shiyi quickly curled up his smiling eyes, with a faint smile at the corner of his mouth. She has thick and smooth black long hair, neatly centered with her hair tucked behind her ears, while hanging naturally beside her cheeks, extremely dignified. But when he laughed, the brilliance in his eyes couldn't suppress even a sound of serious clothes, and flew out like a butterfly fluttering with its wings. On this solemn office aisle, her whole person seemed to be alive. But Shi Yan's gaze never fell on her again, as if a wax figure stood in front of her, passing her straight. Zhang Shiyi her smile remained unchanged, staring at the air and nodding to inflate to herself, then turned around and said, She, we have an appointment for this afternoon's interview. Shi Yan stopped, looked sideways, and raised his eyebrows. The air in this area seemed to have stopped flowing, and the assistant secretaries around them passed their inquisitive gazes, surrounding Zheng Shiyi and Shi Yan. Everyone present knows that today's Kaijing Weekly's interview is over. 
Even Chen Sheng on the side was stunned. Miss, you have amnesia? How could Zhang Shiyi not feel the atmosphere around her? She was also beating a drum in her heart, but she still had to look at Shi Yan as if she didn't know anything. But without a blog, she can only go home empty-handed today. Zhang Shiyi pinched the palms of his hands, raised a smile, and said in a clear voice, I, I have been looking forward to this interview for a long time. I have finally waited until today. Do you think it is convenient now? After the voice fell, the aisle was so quiet that needles fell. Shi Yan's upper eyelids drooped slightly, and at the moment she retracted her gaze, she saw her tightly curled hands hanging on the sides of her legs. Because of the force, the joints showed a light blue color. Suddenly, the person in front of him frowned, his lips curled slightly, staring at him closely and said in a voice that was so small that only he could hear, I will delay you for a while, okay. After Xi'an, the molars suddenly itch. After a while. He didn't even lift his eyes, but the non-motional voice came to everyone's ears clearly. Come. The surroundings are strangely quiet. Everyone looked at each other, shocked but afraid to ask more. Probably only Zhang Shiyi finally reacted. It wasn't until Shi Yan stepped away that she suddenly recovered. Is it convenient for you? Come. According to Zhang Shiyi's understanding, that is, my convenience. It's so convenient for me. What kind of living bodhisattva is this alive? She turned around in surprise, and the living bodhisattva had already reached the elevator entrance, so she immediately followed. The elevator is descending at a constant speed. The space has changed from a spacious office area to a relatively small elevator. So Zhang Shiyi calmed down at this moment, and when he looked at the button, the light was on the underground parking lot on the second floor. Zhang Shiyi didn't know why he wanted to go to the parking lot, so he glanced at Shi Yan's back, and then at Chen Sheng, who was watching his nose and his heart. He cautiously said to the back of the living Bodhisattva's head, Shi Zong, may I ask us now? Is going to suddenly, a cell phone rang. Zhang Shiyi clearly distinguished that this was Shi Yan's call, so she closed her mouth wittily. But Shi Yan took out his phone slowly, glanced at it, and then hung up. Not long after, Chen Sheng's cell phone rang again. Zhang Shiyi couldn't see the expression when Shi Yan just hung up the phone, but he could see Chen Sheng's face. After seeing the caller ID, he frowned quickly and then picked it up. Before he spoke, Zhang Shiyi clearly heard the sharp female voice on the phone, call my uncle to answer the phone. My day. Small. 3. Zhang Shiyi's reaction became almost physiological. He couldn't hold back a bitter cold in his stomach. He tightened the chain of the shoulder bag with both hands, staring at Shi Yan's back with all kinds of emotions. She wanted to see what Shi Yan had towards her niece. Chen Sheng handed out the phone. Before he could say anything, Shi Yan said as if eyes were growing behind his back, Tell her, don't show up in front of me if you don't be obedient. The tone was calm and unwavering, as if explaining three meals a day, but there was an inexplicable sense of oppression when listening. Zhang Shiyi. She curled her lips and sneered. It's kind of majestic. Why don't you teach your niece not to get involved as a third party if you are so majestic? Chen Sheng gave an um and relayed it truthfully, and then the phone was hung up. Calm was restored in the elevator again. It wasn't until she arrived in the parking lot that her thinking eased from Shi Yan's strong attitude towards his niece. This is better than she thought. A strong little uncle, and a good little uncle, that is too suitable to give her a prestige and prestige blessing. The door opened, Shi Yan stepped out, and Zhang Shiyi followed him step by step. When he walked to a car, the driver Wei Shi Yan opened the right door. He seemed to remember that there was a person behind him. He stopped and slowly turned his upper body to his side, looking down at Zhang Shiyi. I have a Tahur drive, the car said. Although the other party is not asking for consent, Zhang Shiyi nodded reservedly, yes. It can be said under the car. Shi Yan didn't reply again. 
When he turned around, he released a button on his suit and got into the car directly. Zhang Shiyi looked at the car in front of him and couldn't help but twitched at the corner of his mouth. You seen Zhou, can't you think of it, I got in this car before you, P. Although there were four people in the car, there was no sound. It seems that sometimes the place where the banquet is, is particularly quiet. This was Zhang Shiyi's first feeling when he got in the car. This person is like a walking muffler. He leaned back in the chair, took off his glasses, and slowly wiped the lenses with the lens cleaning paper. Feeling the movement next to him, he looked to the right side, and Zhang Shiyi's long hair, who was bent over and sat up with his skirt, hung down like a waterfall, and a faint fragrance was blown to the tip of his nose. She was wearing an off-white pencil skirt. When she sat down with her legs slanted, the skirt shrank to 10 centimeters above her knees, revealing a pair of slender long legs, which were wider than the tightly fitting skirt. Shi Yan retracted his gaze and put on his glasses. The car slowly pulled out of the parking lot, and the aroma seemed to linger on the tip of his nose. Shi Yan asked suddenly, Is it cold? Zhang Shiyi was stunned for a moment, then looked up at Shi Yan. Unexpectedly, he would ask her this. Too caring and meticulous. It's not cold. Zhang Shiyi smiled and shook his head. Shi Yan folded his legs and quietly told the driver, Open the window. The window of the car was rolled, and a cold wind of late autumn blew on Zhang Shiyi's face mercilessly, even his breath was pungent. Zhang Shiyi. If I say I am not cold does not mean that I am very hot? Zhang Shiyi admitted that when she sat up, she deliberately depressed her posture, managed her expression, and even adjusted her legs in a calm manner. She doesn't know how far Shi Yan's eyes are and whether she can discover her inner beauty, so the outer beauty must always be plainly placed in front of him. But at the moment the car windows were open, and the cold wind that was about to enter the winter was pouring into the car desperately like no money. Zhang Shiyi's thoughts were gone, he closed his legs calmly, wrapped his coat tightly, took out the recording pen, cleared his throat, and said, She's own, then I have the recording pen now. Shi Yan leaned back in the chair, closed his eyes, his mouth didn't grow a bit, and he answered Zhang Shiyi's words with an um. I'm afraid it's not going to fall asleep in the next second. Do I look so unattractive? Zhang Shiyi cursed in his heart, and his mouth was clever, I will record the whole process, and I will check it with you when the final draft comes out. After speaking, Shi Yan didn't answer, still keeping his eyes closed and meditation. Zhang Shiyi turned out the outline. The theme of this interview is mainly around the role of the renminbi as a pillar currency in Asian currency cooperation and the role of the renminbi in East Asia. First of all, I would like to ask you to talk about it. As a large commercial bank in the process of advancing the internationalization of the renminbi, you what preparation do you think you need to do? After listening to Zhang Shiyi's words, Shi Yan turned his head and pressed his chin, and glanced at Zhang Shiyi lightly. Zhang Shiyi didn't know what this meant, so he had to look back too. Unexpectedly, Shi Yan didn't look away. She didn't know what expression she was making when she looked at each other, so she had to blink her eyes. Putting aside other factors, she has been preparing for this work for a long time, and naturally she will be more nervous about how much she expects. After a while, Shi Yan didn't know what he thought of, and he snorted in his nasal cavity almost inaudibly, and then retracted his gaze. Zhang Shiyi? If it wasn't for my ulterior motives for you, I would have to ask you today to talk about what your microimagey mean. When Zhang Shiyi was slandering, Shi Yan raised his hand to loosen his bow tie, and then began to answer Zhang Shiyi's questions. When he uttered the first sentence, Zhang Shiyi hadn't recovered yet, he was taken aback, and immediately lowered his head to start recording. What Shi Yan said was very logical and intertwined, and he answered sentence by sentence. Although there were not many words, the amount of information was very full. Zhang Shiyi didn't dare to miss a sentence and listened carefully. The car has been moving forward at high speed, up the mountain road, into the tunnel, and around the overpass. 
Zhang Shiyi never looked up and noticed the changes outside the window. She threw out the topics one by one, and there was almost no free time to think about where the car would go. When she finished asking the content of the outline, the recorder indicated that one hour and fifty-six minutes had passed. It's actually very difficult to catch up with his thoughts. The demand for attention is almost up to the test level. During the period, he has to analyze what he said so that he will not ask repeated questions to make him laugh, so Zhang Shiyi recorded the final points. At that time, the palm of the hand was already sweating. Zhang Shiyi raised her head, glanced at Shi Yan, and saw that the other person's expression was calm, but she was not as nervous as her. Her eyes gradually stayed on his eyes. Viewed from the side, the lenses coated his eyelashes with a faint light, and he couldn't see the emotions, but it was difficult to look away. Are you finished? Shi Yan suddenly turned to look at her. Zhang Shiyi suddenly retracted his gaze, I'm finished. Next second. Zhang Shiyi. The already quiet car seems to be quieter. She closed the pen cover, pretended that nothing happened, and turned over the notebook with her face down, trying to conceal her embarrassment of peeking at his captured bag. After a moment of silence, Zhang Shiyi began to feel a little nervous, quietly raising his eyes to look at Shi Yan. It happened to meet Shi Yan's gaze. He slowly straightened his upper body, raised his hand to adjust his tie, and the expression in his eyes looking at her became gloomy. The car stopped slowly at this time. Zhang Shiyi secretly squeezed a sweat. Mouth scooped up. It should be wretched. The interior of the car is constantly quiet. A cold wind blew in, and Zhang Shiyi shuddered suddenly. It was in this gap that Shi Yan looked away, opened the door, bowed and got out of the car, and dropped a word. Two hours are here. Zhang Shiyi. His series of movements were too fast, and Zhang Shiyi was in a daze before waking up from the tension in the confrontation just now. She immediately raised her head and looked out of the car window. Large tracks of grass, rows of wooden fences, a few horses grazing sporadically in the middle, the woods at the end are withered, and the sky is grey and dark clouds are accumulating, and I feel that it will be pressed on that piece of wood in the next second. What kind of ghost place is this where birds don't lay eggs? Standing by the car, Shi Yan looked up into the distance, as if he had forgotten the existence of Zhang Shiyi. Zhang Shiyi held the car window with his hands in a panic. But Shi Yan's back seemed to have the words indifferent written in bold. When she was about to speak, Shi Yan turned her head and raised her eyes, You can go now. Zhang Shiyi? How can I walk in this barren mountain? Riding a horse? Seeing that Shi Yan was really going to leave, Zhang Shiyi quickly got out of the car to catch up. She, there is one last question. She pursed the corners of her lips, Why don't you talk about other topics? Shi Yan focused on the phone, not looking at Zhang Shiyi. Say. Zhang Shiyi stood behind him and asked, Do you have a girlfriend? Shi Yan paused at his fingertips and looked over. Zhang Shiyi looked at Shi Yan with a smile, and it seemed that he had no other meaning. After all, many reporters would use such questions at the end of the interview to animate the atmosphere. In fact, her hand on the side of her leg had already made a fist. Shi Yan's gaze shifted down, and she looked a few inches across her face with a sense of inquiry. When he was about to speak, a male voice came not far away. Shi Yan. Shi Yan immediately raised his head, and a white-haired old man in an equestrian uniform walked towards them quickly. At first, Zhang Shiyi just followed Shi Yan to look over, and felt that the old man's voice was familiar. As he got closer and his face became clear, Zhang Shiyi suddenly realized that he really knew him. To be precise, it should be a unilateral acquaintance with this well-known bigwig in the financial industry. Zhang Shiyi studied journalism majoring in finance and economics as an undergraduate, and the teacher mentioned this person Guan Xiangcheng during the first professional course he enrolled. Since then, the name Guan Xiangcheng has run through Zhang Shiyi's entire college years, and it has been mentioned frequently after work. TV, magazines, and newspapers are everywhere filled with his voice. 
Although Guan Xiangcheng has retired and rarely appears in public, his prestige is still as high as Mount Tai. Of course, Zhang Shiyi also heard that Guan Xiangcheng's greatest hobby is horsemanship. So where she is now, it should be Guan Xiangcheng's private racecourse. Guan Xiangcheng held a leather riding whip in his hand and walked leisurely toward this side, slowly paying attention to Zhang Shiyi on the side. Suddenly seeing a strange woman, Guan Xiangcheng's pace unconsciously slowed down, and he looked a little more. But then I thought about it, it seemed that it was not unusual for a man to show up with a woman, and the first sentence of his mouth became, This is. He pointed to Zhang Shiyi. Without waiting for the banquet to speak, Zhang Shiyi took the lead and said, Hello, Mr. Guan, I am Zhang Shiyi, a reporter from Kaijing Weekly. Finance Weekly. Guan Xiangcheng nodded, I have an impression of you. I have read a few of your articles. They are well written and in depth. I didn't expect that I was still a young girl. I don't know if this compliment is a feast for the time, but Zhang Shiyi still accepts it calmly. She raised her head and smiled, You've been rewarded. After a brief introduction, Guan Xiangcheng looked at his guests today and said cheerfully, I thought you were here alone and didn't prepare anything. There are very few girls in my shabby place. Hearing the meaning of this, Zhang Shiyi knew that he had misunderstood that he had come with Shi Yan, and probably thought they had an unusual relationship. Zhang Shiyi lowered his head, rubbed his cuff lightly with his fingers, and quickly calculated his mind. Uncle Guan OMG! Just as Shi Yan spoke, the woman next to her gave a small exclamation. Shi Yan turned her head and saw her looking up, looking at the racetrack ahead, her face was full of surprises, it's so beautiful here. While speaking, she turned her head and glanced around, her long hair was blown by the wind, her eyes lit up, these horses are also so beautiful. It seemed to be an innocent girl who was attracted by the scenery. Zhang Shiyi feels that this wave of acting skills is simply an Oscar in China. When he stopped what he was about to say, Shi Yan frowned and looked at Zhang Shiyi thoughtfully. This is not my best horse. Guan Xiangcheng continued. No matter how many people with status and status, at this age, they can't help but show off their treasures. The real BMW is in it. There's more. Zhang Shiyi looked curious and expectant. How could Guan Xiangcheng fail to see it? He took the whip in his hand and waved to the two of them, Go, come in. After Guan Xiangcheng finished speaking, he turned and walked inward, leaving Zhang Shiyi and Shi Yan behind. In an open place, the wind is always very strong, coming from across the woods, whirring. The people beside him did not speak, but Zhang Shiyi could feel him looking at himself. What kind of identity Guan Xiangcheng is, she just dared to do so because she insisted on banquets and would not explain more in front of him, and put these few children on the stage. But this kind of scrutiny seems to be tormented, and one second will be stretched infinitely. Zhang Shiyi's breathing was a little unbalanced, with the back of her hand behind her waist, and her index finger disturbing everything. After waiting for a few seconds, before the other party could speak, she was heartbroken and raised her head to look at Shi Yan. Sure enough, he ran into his eyes. Zhang Shiyi blinked, looking innocent, as if saying, Guan Xiangcheng invited me, what's wrong? Is there any problem? Zhang Shiyi didn't know if Shi Yan had any problems, anyway, he just showed an unexplained chuckle, and then stopped paying attention to her, stepping up to follow Guan Xiangcheng's footsteps. Entering the racecourse, Guan Xiangcheng stood outside the locker room. Shi Yan walked directly to the dressing room and stepped into the door. Only when he remembered something, he turned his head to look at Zhang Shiyi from the place with his back facing Guan Xiangcheng. He pressed his eyelids, I'll go in and change my clothes. Although the voice was calm, it carried a warning. Zhang Shiyi smiled brightly with a sweet voice, Well. I'll wait obediently. Shi Yan. He stopped talking, and went straight into the locker room. Only Guan Xiangcheng and Zhang Shiyi were left outside. If it is a stranger, 
Guan Xiang Cheng holds his own identity and is the least talkative type of person. But today he obviously regarded Zhang Shiyi as the person who brought him to Xi'an. He just heard the conversation between these two people, and he had a good idea about Zhang Shiyi, and his attitude towards her was almost the same as that of Xi'an. He brought a horse over and chatted with Zhang Shiyi casually while following Mao. After chatting for a few industry-related words, he changed his mind, How long have you known Xi'an? Zhang Shiyi was stunned for a moment before realizing what he meant. She lowered her eyes, her face shy, I have known each other soon. Just met today. Guan Xiang Cheng knew in his heart, smiled and nodded, patted the baby horse in front of him, Can you ride a horse? Zhang Shiyi said no. Guan Xiang Cheng turned and pointed towards the locker room, There are my wife's old clothes inside. If you don't dislike it, you can wear them. You can learn it if you come here. Really? Horse riding is a long way from daily life. Even if it is not because of Xi'an, Zhang Shiyi still has this curiosity, so the surprise at this moment is not acting at all, and a little happily followed Guan Xiang Cheng into the dressing room. Although it is a private racecourse, the dressing room is really not small, with four compartments on each side. She walked behind Guan Xiang Cheng, and when she passed a compartment, she turned her head and saw Xi in behind the curtain. The door curtain was able to block his chest to ankles, and Xi Yan turned around to meet Zhang Shiyi's vision. He took off his glasses, his eyes narrowed slightly. Although the lights in the dressing room were brightly lit, Xi Yan's eyes were somewhat cool. Zhang Shiyi, who had a ghost in his heart, was a little guilty when he saw him, and his eyes flickered and turned away. Feeling that gaze chasing her back, she frowned and quickened her pace. Guan Xiang Cheng took her to a cabinet, opened the door, and a faint fragrance filled her nose. There is a set of red equestrian uniforms hanging in the cabinet. The color of the buttons should be a few years old, but the materials are very high-end and the tailoring is also very neat. You can change it. My wife is about the same shape as you. It should be suitable. Guan Xiang Cheng finished speaking and walked out. There was silence in the dressing room. Zhang Shiyi took out the suit, and when he chose the compartment, he could look at Xi'an. It was a pity that there was a tall locker in between. She couldn't see the situation there, and she didn't know that Xi'an was still there. I haven't moved for so long, so I should have gone out. Zhang Shiyi turned and entered the compartment. She took off her clothes and changed into this equestrian uniform carefully, and when the last button of her neckline was not buttoned, she suddenly heard the sound of footsteps. Zhang Shiyi paused with his fingertips and stopped, carefully identifying if the footsteps were coming towards her. Unfortunately not. The footsteps are getting farther and farther, and it is probably about to go out. Zhang Shiyi touched his belt with his fingers, and suddenly said, She always. The footsteps outside stopped. Standing in the compartment, Zhang Shiyi smiled unscrupulously. How do you tie this belt? Can you teach me? After waiting a few seconds, the footsteps sounded again. The wooden floor in the dressing room suppresses the sound very heavily. He came. Zhang Shiyi released his hand and quickly began to trim his hair. But a few seconds later, she realized that something was wrong. The sound of footsteps seems to be getting farther and farther. Just after thinking about it, there was a bang. The sound of closing the door sounded, and a gust of wind lifted the door curtain in front of Zhang Shiyi. His voice echoed clearly in the dressing room. Don't write if you can't tie it. Marquez once said that when a woman decides to get a man, there is no wall that she can't get past, no fortress that she can't overthrow, and no worries that she can't let go. In fact, there is no one who can control her. God. So is Zhang Shiyi now facing a copper wall and an iron wall? Is it a sea of fire? Is it the wrath of God? No, it's just a small refusal from him. Okay. She closed her eyes and inhaled, adjusted her mind, and walked out while adjusting her neckline. When the door of the locker room was opened, the open wilderness came into view, the grass moved when the wind blows, 
and several horses laid their heads down and fiddled with the grass leisurely. Zhang Shiyi buttoned the button, and when he looked up, he saw the clouds disperse, the sun had fallen below the horizon, and the sky was supported by the sky. In the golden sun, Shi Yan stood next to a red-brown horse. His black night suit was elegant and full of tension, and the horse's fur was groomed to shine like satin. The picturesque scene has a harmonious rhythm. Zhang Shiyi couldn't help but glanced twice. Is it changed? Guan Xiang Cheng walked over with a horse, his arm leaning against the saddle, and looking up and down Zhang Shiyi, it's quite appropriate. After speaking, he patted the horse and waved back to Xi'an. The three of them are not far away, and they can see every move here. He loosened the reins and walked towards them. When he approached, Guan Xiang Cheng said, This horse is the most docile. Let Xi'an teach you to ride it. Okay? Zhang Shiyi immediately looked at Xi'an. He stopped, bowed his head and adjusted his white gloves, without making a sound. Guan Xiang Cheng left after speaking. After a while, Zhang Shiyi heard the sound of horseshoe galloping. Shi Yan put on his gloves and walked to the horse, smoothing his hair in a leisurely manner, but made no next move. In fact, in the short chat before, Zhang Shiyi probably figured out the relationship between Shi Yan and Guan Xiang Cheng. It's not a relative, but Guan Xiang Cheng has a certain friendship with Shi Yan's father and today Shi Yan is here to spend time with him. Shi Yan, a person like this, can come to accompany him to pass the time, which shows his status in Shi Yan's heart. It is not absolute intimacy, but more respect, so he is bound to show his best in front of him. So Zhang Shiyi coughed slightly. Shi Yan looked up at her. Manager Shi. Zhang Shiyi smiled shyly and looked at Shi Yan nervously, then please teach me. Great. For some reason, his tone gave Zhang Shiyi an unkind feeling. Maybe it's an illusion. Zhang Shiyi did psychological counseling for herself, what can she do for her? Can you still feed her to the horse? So she looked up and smiled, thank you Shizong then. Shi Yan raised his hand and made a please gesture. Zhang Shiyi is not a squeamish person. She has the habit of fitness and has a foundation in dancing, so getting on a horse is not difficult for her. The equestrian pants she wore were soft, and she stepped up easily and neatly, flicking her hair, clutching the saddle, and looking down at Shi Yan. Shi Yan held the rein in his hand, glanced at her, and took a step back. Zhang Shiyi blinked, shouldn't he be walking in front and leading the horse? Why are you going to the back? She hadn't figured it out yet, a warm heat surged behind her, the saddle sank, and the horse leaped forward a few steps. Due to inertia, Zhang Shiyi leaned back and leaned against a person's chest. Between the sparks and flints, the air seemed to stop flowing. Zhang Shiyi's upper body was completely frozen and motionless, which intensified the sensitivity of the senses, and clearly felt the breath of Shi Yan slowly enveloping her whole body. Shi Yan stretched out his hand to grab the rein, and wrapped Zhang Shiyi in his arms with both arms. Zhang Shiyi. It doesn't seem to be necessary to teach in this way. Shi Yan seemed to find Zhang Shiyi's stiffness. What's happening? His tone was very weak, but Zhang Shiyi seemed to hear a hint of sarcasm. Her nervousness must have been exposed, and it would be boring to cover it up now. It's okay. Zhang Shiyi gritted his teeth and said word by word, the first time I rode a horse, I was a little nervous. Shi Yan let out a um. But inexplicably, Zhang Shiyi felt that his back was cold. Why does even the word um make her think something is wrong? Under Shi Yan's movements, the horse walked slowly. The afterglow shone on the horse, and the halo was particularly dazzling with the shaking of the horse's back. Shi Yan didn't rush didn't speak, and walked towards the runway like this. Zhang Shiyi felt that her breathing was no longer smooth, and even a little hot. The ups and downs brought up when the horse was walking would make the top of her head touch Shi Yan's chin. Zhang Shiyi always felt that something was wrong. Although she had only been in contact with Shi Yan for a few hours, his temperament was already evident, 
and it shouldn't be like this. Just thinking about it, Guan Xiang Cheng, who had already rode far away, waved back to the two of them, motioning them to follow. Before Zhang Shiyi had time to respond, the horse under him suddenly shook and galloped. Ah! She let out an exclamation without restraint, and grasped the saddle tightly in the bumps. The horse ran very fast, and the saddle under her slammed into her legs again and again, causing pain between her legs, and the extremely fast acceleration of gravity made Zhang Shiyi's head dizzy within a few strokes. Moreover, Shi Yan seemed to keep a certain physical distance from her intentionally, and his arm did not hoop her, so with every bump, Zhang Shiyi felt that he was about to fall off his horse. Slow down! She yelled, clutching her saddle tightly, slow down! Shi Yan was as if he hadn't heard her, but faster and faster. Just knew he was not a good person. The horse was also getting more and more excited. When he crossed the railing, he barely made a 180-degree rotation, which made Zhang Shiyi's eyes a flower, and he was dizzy. You slow down. Is this horse crazy? Slow down. After a few laps, Zhang Shiyi didn't realize how many times he screamed. He only felt that his throat was hot and painful, and his hair was messed up on his face by the wind. She probably went half-life, but Shi Yan still breathed so calmly. Seeing another railing in front of him, the horse was rushing over at extreme speed, Zhang Shiyi's whole body was not good, his heart hung in his throat, his eyes widened. Slow down. She grabbed the back of Shi Yan's hand and cried with a cry, Please. Slow down. Please. The moment the warm palm was pressed against him, Shi Yan bowed his head and just saw that Zhang Shiyi's face was bloodless and whiter than the pearls on his earlobes. Only the nose was slightly red from the excitement, and the eyelashes were on the eyelashes. It seems that there is still water vapor. Zhang Shiyi didn't feel the gaze from behind, only knew that she could transform into a human body fountain when she went down like this, showing Shi Yan what she had eaten at noon. However, just as her stomach surged, the rain in front of her suddenly tightened. The horse stopped while sprinting. The force of inertia was so great that Zhang Shiyi crawled forward and was about to hit the horse's neck when the clothes on his back were suddenly held tightly. The whistling wind in his ears stopped, the running horses became docile, and even the sun became soft. Zhang Shiyi confirmed once again, yes, hold it. It's not holding and holding, but holding it. However, Zhang Shiyi had no intention to be angry at how absurd this action was. As soon as she saw the horse stop steadily, she turned over immediately. She didn't care how embarrassed her movements were. The moment her foot touched the ground, she seemed to be alive. Come over, back and forth a few steps. Shi Yan sat on the horse, looking at her condescendingly, playing with the reins in his spare time. Stop learning. No, no. Zhang Shiyi's eyes were diffident and he squatted his bangs indiscriminately. I just need to experience the experience. Not far away, Guan Xiang Cheng stopped and looked over here. Shi Yan let out an um, came down and led Ma Chao Guan towards Xiang Cheng. It seems very gentle, it seems that the person who just did that kind of thing is not like him. Zhang Shiyi looked at his back, still unable to calm down. She tried to adjust her mentality for the third time. After a few minutes, the adjustment failed. Bad, this person is really bad. What Marquez said was not necessarily right, at least she couldn't even pass the saddle in front of her. I'm not playing anymore, bye bye. At the same time, the two people in the distance didn't know what they were talking about. Guan Xiang Cheng looked at Zhang Shiyi and shook his head with a smile. Immediate life Zhang Shiyi was right, Shi Yan seemed to smile. It was a smile. She rolled her eyes at the bottom of her heart, then took a few steps back in silence. After that, Shi Yan only accompanied Guan Xiang Cheng, and the two never came here again. On the way back, she was still sitting in Shi Yan's car. The two sat in the back row as they had come. The psychological shadow of riding a horse could not dissipate for a long time in Zhang Shiyi's mind. 
she pressed against the window of the car and held on to the handrails. There was a gap of 800 meters between the time and the banquet, for fear that the car would get bumped when driving. But today's experience really consumed her too much experience. The car seemed to become a cradle when driving on the mountain road with 18 bends. Soon, she leaned against the car window and fell asleep. When she woke up, there was only the driver in the car. The car was parked downstairs of her house. After getting off the bus, Zhang Shiyi thanked the driver, then turned and walked into the community. Only a few steps away, she touched her ears and found that the left side was empty. When she left the racecourse, she had confirmed that her earrings were still there. They disappeared now, and they must have fallen on the car, so she immediately turned around. Hey the car has been driven far away. Forget it. Zhang Shiyi didn't bother to care about the 50 yuan earrings bought by the jewelry store. When Zhang Shiyi arrived at the company the next morning, his steps were empty. Kong Nan winked at her as soon as she walked to the office area. When she sat down, Kong Nan turned around anxiously and whispered, You didn't look at the phone. Why didn't you return to my WeChat? There are too many group messages, so I'm going down. Zhang Shiyi said while turning on the computer, What's wrong? Kong Nan looked around, lowered her voice again, and banged like a machine gun, I went to the editor's office this morning and saw Su Yuling handing in a manuscript. I wondered what manuscript she had not submitted for interviews in the past two days. I secretly submitted it. I went to read her manuscript, guess what? She actually went to the interview dinner yesterday. Zhang Shiyi's brain hurts as soon as he hears the word Xi'an, and when it comes to Su Yuling's affairs, her head will explode. Zhang Shiyi rubbed his eyebrows and turned on the computer, I know. She also told Tang Yi yesterday. I guess you know it too. Kong Nan leaned closer, what is the most annoying thing? Didn't you show me your outline? Then I read her manuscript. The outline is completely copied from you. Zhang Shiyi's hand suddenly squeezed the mouse, his eyes widened, are you sure? I'm sure. Kong Nan said solemnly. Can I make a joke about this kind of thing? I have read your outline for help. I remember it clearly and it is impossible to read it wrong. Every question is exactly the same. No wonder, during the interview banquet yesterday, he showed that kind of weird expression to the questions she asked. Zhang Shiyi smashed the mouse and leaned back into the chair with a bang, his eyes staring at the computer almost burst into flames. Has it been Mercury retrograde recently? Why are all the villains rushing at her? Editor Tang also knows now. Let's see what she says. Kong Nan patted Zhang Shiyi on the back and succumbed to her. Did you know yesterday that you were so angry that you didn't sleep after being cut? Look how haggard you are. Zhang Shiyi turned his head and saw Su Yuling on the other side, holding a cup of coffee, standing by the window chatting with the supervisor of the administration department. She was so energetic, her newly made nails gleamed in the sun, almost blinding Zhang Shiyi's eyes. Zhang Shiyi drank a big sip of water, and after suppressing his anger, he said, I just wrote the manuscript all night. Interviews scheduled can be intercepted. She doesn't work overtime. Isn't she waiting for the other party's manuscripts to be posted before submitting it? Hey! Kong Nan was no stranger to Zhang Shiyi's writing all night, but another message of this sentence hit her hard, meaning that you still have the interview to the banquet. Yes, and I also submitted the paper this morning. Oh, I was scared to death. I thought you were going to be dumb. Kong Nan laughed suddenly, and happily turned back to work on his own affairs. Suddenly remembering something, he turned around and said, Speaking of this, Shi Yanren nice. Zhang Shiyi's fingertips on the mouse paused and snorted coldly. In the next few hours, Tang also replied to the email but he never contacted Zhang Shiyi, and a busy reminder hung at the door of the office. Zhang Shiyi knew in his heart that this kind of things that lingered on the edge of unspoken rules had never been restricted by rules and regulations. Since the matter hadn't become a big issue, 
Tang also didn't want to spend too much time dealing with this kind of things during the performance season. It was not until 5 o'clock that Zhang Shiyi finally received Tang Yi's comments on the manuscript. The comments were the same as the previous style, without mentioning anything else. The problem now is that although Zhang Shiyi also submitted the manuscript, Su Yuling used her outline and wrote the same content. One possibility is not ruled out. Tang Yi or the editor-in-chief think Su Yuling's manuscript is better written, so she will publish it in the end. Zhang Shiyi looked back at Su Yuling. She was sitting and flipping through the magazine, her expression relaxed and calm. Then Zhang Shiyi is not calm. Obviously it was her interview, so why worry about whether someone else's manuscript will be published now? After another half an hour, there was no movement on Zhang Shiyi's side, but Su Yuling entered Tang Yi's office. I'll go to the toilet. Zhang Shu pointed to Tang Yi's office, and said to Kong Nan, you can help me pay attention and send me a message if there is any situation. Kong Nan said okay, and Zhang Shiyi immediately stood up. In fact, she didn't move very much, her leg touched the corner of the table lightly, but the pain still made her breathe. What's the matter? Kong Nan looked back, you be careful. It's okay. Last night she went home and started writing, until dawn, she took a bath in a vague way, and didn't pay attention to the condition of her legs. It hurts so much now, it must have been bruised by the saddle. Entering the toilet, Zhang Shiyi lowered his head to see that it was true. Zhang Shiyi held on to the door, gritted his teeth, and greeted Xi'an for the 18th time. When she was about to go out, the toilet door was violently pushed open, with a loud noise, and Zhang Shiyi subconsciously retracted his hand that was about to open the compartment. Immediately afterwards, the people who came in spoke. If a company is selected as the place where right and wrong are the easiest to give birth to, the first place is the restroom. For example, now Zhang Shiyi knows who it is when he hears that voice. Isn't she really partial to Zhang Shiyi? By the pool, Su Yuling was holding a cell phone, not knowing who he was talking to, since Zhang Shiyi airborne the financial team, how many cakes have she shared with me? I got three master editions the year before, and two last year. This year is better. At the end of the year I still don't have one. Tang Yi dare to ask herself whether she is partial to Zhang Shiyi. I don't know what was said on the other end of the phone, and Su Yuling became even more angry, don't mention it. I'm also unlucky. Zhang Shiyi got a lot more information than me. After comparing my manuscripts like this, Shi Yan followed me and sent me away. Okay? Zhang Shiyi thought he had heard it wrong, and was stunned for a moment. So when she sorted out the logbook last night, her brain capacity almost exploded. It was not her illusion. Suddenly, the bruise on the leg didn't seem so painful, and the footsteps didn't seem so vain. Su Yuling was able to complain, completely unaware that no one opened the door behind him. God knows what she lowered her head, and told her all the key points. I didn't lower my head. Su Yuling's back was cold, and the moment she raised her eyes, she saw Zhang Shiyi standing behind her in the mirror, looking at her with a smile. At this moment, Su Yuling suffered not only the guilty conscience of doing bad things and being caught in the face, but also the shock of the spiritual level. The blood of his face disappeared at a speed visible to the naked eye. She shook her hand and the phone hit the ground with a bang. Zhang Shiyi took a step forward, looked at Su Yuling in the mirror, and leaned toward her face, people always liked me better. At the same time, he blinked. After speaking, she walked away and gently closed the door. On the way back to his workstation, Zhang Shiyi kept laughing. Kong Nan looked at her as if she was insane, but she ignored her, as if she had just been promoted and made a fortune. But the moment she sat down, her thigh still throbbed. His Zhang Shiyi held the table and looked down at his legs, the idea she had dismissed came back again. This pain is nothing. After suffering hardship, it is my little aunt. In fact, Zhang Shiyi left the bathroom with his front foot, and Su Yuling followed it out with his back foot. 
The two walked back to the office area of the financial team one after another, only less than three meters apart. If it is on weekdays, people in the same group walk out one after another, not to mention being so close holding hands, but also having to talk side by side. But at that time, the two of them were like strangers, one brow with joy, the other as earthy, and the self-explanatory gossip scent filled them all over them. Zhang Shiyi looked at his mobile phone calmly in the eyes of his colleagues around him, obviously or not, and then got up and walked towards Tang Yi's office. The matter has settled down, and Tang doesn't have to bother to deal with her most annoying subordinate disputes. In the morning, the irritability and entanglement after receiving Su Yuling's manuscript has disappeared. At this moment, he sits lazily on the swivel chair, turning his pen, smiling Ying Ying looked at Zhang Shiyi sitting in front of him. Su Yuling is really unkind in this matter. I warned her just now and wrote a note to her. The performance and year-end evaluation are all left behind. I will definitely put an end to this situation in the future. She saw Zhang Shiyi look unmoved, and said, they are all in the same group. See you when you look up and bow your head. It's impossible to expel her because of this, right? After working under Tang Yi for these years, Zhang Shiyi has long known that she handled these things with a amicable attitude, and did not expect her to give a clear and clear explanation. It's just that this dumb loss that was almost calculated by others, even if you didn't eat it in the end, it was still difficult to dissipate that unrest. Zhang Shiyi looked down at his nails and said nothing. From Tang Yi's perspective, Zhang Shiyi lowered her eyes, her curled eyelashes covered her eyes, but her slightly toppled lips still revealed her dissatisfaction. Tang Yi suddenly felt a little helpless. Even a woman couldn't bear Zhang Shiyi's expression, with a little natural tenderness, like acting like a baby, but also like making emotions, which made people unable to refuse cruelly. As soon as her thoughts diverged, she thought of Zhang Shiyi's ex-boyfriend again. In the end, what kind of beauty do you want to avoid such a beauty? Or is it just that men's inferiority is so deeply ingrained? There was an awkward silence in the office. Tang Yi was deeply caught up in the puzzling philosophical question. It was not until the software came up to invite a reminder that she recovered. While reading the news, she said, This is the end, okay? Her manuscript is also good. It's abolished. You must be the key column of Q4 this year. Zhang Shiyi lazily let out a um. When she stood up, she heard Tang Yi coax her, this is not to compensate you, but your content is indeed much higher than her. The same interviewee, the same outline, people there is still a gap between people. Oh. Zhang Shiyi raised his eyebrows, his eyes were a little smug, that's no way, I'm more like Xi'an. Okay. Tang Yi glanced at her while finishing the meeting materials. She looked at it as if she was saying, Did you drink fake wine, are you talking and writing something whimsical? Knowing that you are the strongest in our team in deep digging, you don't have to be humble. Zhang Shiyi There is no humility. Why can't I be a person who eats on the face? What did the editor say? In the afternoon, there was a summit forum in the financial center. The company arranged Zhang Shiyi and Kong Nan to go there together. On the way, the topics of the two naturally revolved around Su Yuling. Kong Nan saw that Zhang Shiyi's face was good, knowing that she should not have suffered a loss, should be dealt with. What can I do? Zhang Shiyi took the small mirror to touch up his makeup, and said without a word, You don't know the editor Tang, the big things are made small, the small things are made small. Is it possible that Su Yuling can still be under the national flag? Review Tisk Kong Nan made a vomiting gesture, I used to participate in the campus news agency when I was a student, and that person is still the head of a TV station reporter, and it's very popular. We use this kind of person. No way, despicable is the pass of the villain. Although Zhang Shiyi didn't answer any more, he pressed the puff firmly. She held grudges and couldn't swallow this breath easily. Twenty minutes later, the taxi arrived at the destination and was pulling over to stop. 
Zhang Shiyi sat on the right and got out of the car first. Kong Nan sat inside, bending over to get out with her bag, Zhang Shiyi outside suddenly squeezed in and pushed her in, and then closed the door. What are you doing? Kong Nan almost fell back into the car, leaning half of his body on the seat, looking at Zhang Shiyi in horror, is the floor hot outside? Hush! Zhang Shiyi compared her with a shut-up gesture, and sat and took a breath. Hell, she actually saw you seeing Joe just now. It's nothing to see you seeing Joe here, after all, it's where he works. But he actually got out of the driver's seat of a Mercedes-Benz. Even the new car was changed so soon. For a moment, Zhang Shiyi felt smoke was all over his head. In normal times, she was not afraid to run into Yu Xing Zhou. It's just this situation, Yu Xing Zhou is driving a Mercedes Benz, and she is sitting in a taxi, which is too real in the world. Seeing that Zhang Shiyi didn't speak, Kong Nan poked his head out for a short while, turning his gaze to the front and he also happened to see Yu Xing Zhou. He walked around to the trunk, carried something out, and then left. Kong Nan blinked, isn't that your boyfriend? I'll be careful to verify it and make a bold guess. Did you break up? And you were dumped. If I'm not mistaken, you are not only dumped, but also green. Okay, it seems that the other party's new girlfriend is still a rich man. This is not a new car. Zhang Shiyi sighed and watched Yu Xing Zhou go farther and farther, he was relieved, his entire shoulders were broken, and he looked at Kong Nan desperately. Actually, you don't have to guess so accurately. Kong Nan was not surprised that the results of his analysis were correct, and even a little proud, collect information in the current context and fully understand it. If I don't even have this acuity, I will disqualify the journalist. Okay? Zhang Shiyi. It wasn't until Yu Xing Zhou entered a coffee shop that Zhang Shiyi opened the car door and walked down, Kong Nan followed closely behind. Oh, it's actually okay. Seeing Zhang Shiyi walking so fast, Kong Nan ran two steps to catch up. He didn't forget to look back at the Mercedes Benz parked on the side of the road. It's just a Mercedes Benz C, which is more than 300,000 yuan. Well, it's not a good car, it's not worthy of rich people, and we can't afford it if we work hard. With that said Zhang Shiyi also looked back at the car, but Shi Yan's figure appeared in his mind. For a while, Rolls Royce and Bentley changed seats, but bought more than 300,000 Mercedes Benz for his niece. This man is not only stubborn, but also vulgar. Thinking of Shi Yan, Zhang Shiyi felt his empty earlobe thoughtfully. In the evening, the first rush hour of the Zhongcheng CBD came, pedestrians hurried, and vehicles were in order. A black Rolls Royce slowly merged into the traffic. Shi Yan sat in the back row, took off his glasses, closed his eyes and rubbed his brow bones, holding a meeting minutes on hand. The moment he opened his eyes, he seemed to see a small dazzling thing on the seat next to him. He put on his glasses and took a closer look. It was a pearl earring. Shi Yan squeezed it up, wondering who dropped the thing, and Chen Sheng's cell phone rang in the front row. After he connected, he hummed twice, hesitated for a moment, then turned around and handed the phone over. President Shi, reporter Zhang Shiyi from Kaijing Weekly is looking for you. Shi Yan lowered his eyes, put the earrings in his palms together with his palms, and took Chen Sheng's mobile phone with his other hand. He answered calmly, and immediately answered the conversation. He called out Shizong, and the ending sounded downward, sounding a hint of panic. It seems that I left the earring on your car. Did you see it? It's just a pearl earring. Shi Yan released his palm again. As night was about to fall, the sky turned from dim yellow to dark blue. Only the searchlight in the driver's seat was on in the car and the afterlight penetrated to the back row, illuminating the pearl in his palm. Did not see it. Zhang Shiyi paused, and then said, Could you please check again? This earring is really important to me. How important is it? Zhang Shiyi paused again. Is this the point? Forget it. 
It was, my grandma gave it to my mother, and my mother gave it to me again. There is no sound on the other side of the phone. Zhang Shuyi choked up, it is our family's heirloom. There was still no answer on the other side. Zhang Shuyi took a deep breath, crying in his voice, it is my dowry. I will bring it to my wedding in the future. When I see it, I will think of my grandmother. I haven't seen it for a long, long time. Past her. This performance is affectionate and pitiful. There was a moment of silence on the phone, and Shi Yan's usual cold voice was a little dumb. Well, I see it now. Zhang Shiyi squinted and smiled, stretching his whole body, rolling his toes on the ground for a half circle. Use earrings to get a chance to meet, plan to pass. That. Zhang Shiyi didn't finish her words, but waited to see Shi Yan's attitude. The voice on the other side sounded calmly. Your dowry is made of plastic. Zhang Shiyi. In Zhang Shiyi's eyes, dictating the contents of these recordings can be competent for anyone who has received an undergraduate education. So she didn't pay much attention to Qin Xiu. The deadline for Shi Yan's interview was hanging over her head, and she still had many details that had not been finalized. Since Zhang Shiyi started her career, she has never given up so much energy on a manuscript. It's not that she wasn't serious in the past. Her analytical and comprehension skills and text organization skills are fully capable of handling all the tasks she comes into contact with, and most of the time she still feels comfortable. But this time the difficulty of the manuscript jumped directly to the transitional stage. Zhang Shiyi felt very strenuous. It is true that the amount of information given by Shi Yan is very large. Because of this, Zhang Shiyi's choice of the content of his words has become the biggest difficulty. It seems that if you cut any place, the following content is missing a piece of logical support. Zhang Shiyi must carefully consider every sentence and the writing of every word. In order to concentrate, Zhang Shiyi took out the noise-canceling headphones that had not been used for a long time, and adjusted the frequency to the highest. The world instantly quieted down and even the sound of airflow disappeared. Many people lie down and take a break in the afternoon, and the lights in the office area are also dimmed. Qin Xiu listened to it for half an hour, and only three lines appeared in the document. Many of the technical terms were guessed by her, but after hearing it, she couldn't understand it. She looked around, then moved the stool slightly, intending to ask without shame. She leaned over and whispered, Sister Shiyi. The other party did not respond. Qin Shiyu took a breath and raised a little volume, Sister Zhang Shiyi. The other party didn't even blink. It can be said that since childhood, Qin Shiyu has never received such a cold reception. Qin Shiyu sat back down, took the earphones and stuffed it back into his bag, neatly packed his things and prepared to leave. Only when her finger pressed the shutdown button, she was awake for a moment, closed her eyes and took two deep breaths. Given to evil forces. Zhang Shiyi was completely immersed in Qi Yin's thinking, and when he raised his head again, it was already a quarter past six. The off get off work time of the magazine is six o'clock, but no media platform can get off work on time. But after all, overtime is working overtime. The atmosphere is not as serious as before. Some whispered and chatted, and the voice was not loud, just floating above the grid. Zhang Shiyi faintly heard that someone was discussing interns, so he subconsciously turned his head to look at the next workstation. Empty. The chair has been pushed forward, the computer has been closed, and even the desk has been cleaned up. She seems to be a very clean girl. But I don't seem to like work too much, smiley face. Zhang Shiyi was a little speechless. It was like this on the first day of the internship, and I don't know how to do it in the future. She rubbed her eyebrows, moved the swivel chair, leaned against Kong Nan's shoulder, and said weakly, Stop writing, just chat with me for a while. What are you talking about? Just as Zhang Shiyi was about to speak, someone behind him suddenly patted his hands gently. Everyone looked over in search of sound. Su Yuling stood there, beaming with joy, 
followed by a plain-faced girl. Introduce everyone, this is Beer Cheng, the intern who came today, please take good care of everyone in the future. She brought the newcomer to introduce her. It was obvious that the two of them already had a affiliation, and everyone was very generous and greeted Cheng Beer one after another. In this harmonious atmosphere, the vacancy on Qin Shihe's side seemed a bit discordant. How could a person like Su Yuling let go of such details? She glanced over there and asked Zhang Shiyi with a smile, What about your intern? Why don't you come to meet everyone? The suspicion between the two has not been publicly pulled, so in any public situation, it is still like a close colleague. Zhang Shiyi smiled lightly, It's off work. It's so early. Su Yuling turned her head with her chin open, and raised her hand to Cheng Beer, Go ahead. Zhang Shiyi after this episode passed, the colleagues who worked overtime went back to work, but it was difficult for Zhang Shiyi to concentrate fully anymore. As soon as she saw Qin Shihu's empty seat, she would think of Su Yuling's faint arrogance just now. It happened that she took the time to go to the bathroom, met HR, and asked about Cheng Beer casually. Graduated from the top one media college in China, first in professional performance, national award for three consecutive years, double degree in finance, and articles published in the junior year have won national awards. Okay. Zhang Shiyi is not unbalanced at all. After sitting back at her desk, she heard someone discussing it again. The intern Su Yuling has an unusual background. He is a financial practitioner at home, and the relationship behind him is very strong. And seems to be an executive of Minjiu. Yeah, I said that she usually finds it bothersome. How can someone take the initiative to bring an intern? This time she really picked up a big deal. The scary thing is that this intern has such a strong background, and he works hard. It was only the first day of the internship that I worked overtime, which made me very stressed. Zhang Shiyi put on the headphones in silence. As long as I don't compare, I won't be hurt. At the same time, she's old house. Qin Shihu has always been insensitive to the change of seasons. Every year, he saw that the loquat tree in the yard was blooming, only to realize that winter had come. In the seasons with short days and long nights, the day gets dark early, and clusters of white loquat flowers are crowded on the branches, Shan Shan is lovely. A few scents of flowers drifted into this old house, drowning in the fragrance of food. In the dining room, the phone on the table vibrated several times, but Qin Shihu did not open it. At this moment, she is sitting on the left side of Song Lilan, and on the right side is sitting on Qin Xiaoming. It stands to reason that a family of three should be happy to get together, but Qin Shihu couldn't relax after a feast sitting opposite. The long table is more than one meter wide, and there is a row of candles standing between the dinner plates, which is like a shadowy halo. How about the first day of work today? Song Lilan talked to her daughter while flipping the phone. Qin Shihu didn't answer right away. She took a peek at Xi'an and found that his attention was not here when he was looking at the phone. She whispered, It's not very good, it's so boring, and asked me to type out the recording on the first day. I am a reporter and not a typist. Oh. Song Lilan gave herself a mouthful of grapes, chewed twice, and then said, Are colleagues easy to get along with? Qin Shihe pursed her lips and said nothing. Song Lilan is a well known female pop singer, but she protects her privacy very well. Few people in the circle even knew that she was married and had children. There are results and causes, and she spends very little time with her daughter. At the moment, Song Lilan was not particularly interested in this topic, just as her agent called her she left the dining room along the way. At this time, Qin Xiaoming put down his mobile phone and answered, Who is the leader? Qin Shihu's voice changed, mixed with a few traces of cold air, I don't remember, it seems to be Zheng. The candle light flicked, and Shi Yan's eyelids moved slightly. Qin Xiaoming asked, Zheng Shiyi. Qin Shihu raised her eyebrows, Dad, do you know him? I've been in contact, it's okay, study hard. 
Qin Shihu threw away the towel for wiping her hands, and said coldly, I'm willing to learn, but will others teach me? Hey! Qin Xiaoming's expression finally became more serious, and he leaned back in the chair, making a posture of listening respectfully. Even Qi Yan, who was opposite, gently raised his eyebrows, distracting her attention. Although Qin Xia was forced to go to work, she was not hopeless, and she knew very well that her performance in this job determined her quality of life for a long time to come. So she thought about being safer. However, Miss Qin has been beautiful for more than 20 years, and she is not greeted wherever she goes. The problem of graduating some time ago is already Waterloo in her life, but after all, the school did not speak too badly in front of her. Today, she wanted to ask Zhang Shiyi three times, but the other party didn't give her a look. Even when she finally got off work, when she picked up her bag and left, they didn't even look at her. Qin Xiu had never suffered this kind of grievance, let alone the habit of swallowing his voice. When accusing Zhang Shiyi, his eyes turned red unknowingly. Of course, her thoughts are not simple, she has a miserable selfishness, her tone has increased, and her words have emotions, and she hopes that someone can feel sorry for her and let her out of the sea of suffering. After speaking, there was a moment of silence in the dining room. Qin Shiho closed her voice and quietly observed Shi Yan's reaction. Shi Yan buckled the phone on the table and looked up. After just one glance, he withdrew his gaze and slowly wiped his hands with a towel. Qin Shiho was shocked no matter how she looked at the arc of the corner of her mouth. I don't know what her uncle meant, and whether she received her miserable radio wave. Looking out from the floor-to-ceiling windows of the office, the bright moon hangs high and the flashing neon outlines the scenery that is unique to the city at night. Unfortunately, no one in the overtime party at this point will appreciate this scene. At a quarter past ten, Zhang Shiyi revised the final details and sent the manuscript to Tang Yi before rubbing his neck, packing up his things and taking a taxi home. There was a bit of traffic jam at this point, and it took nearly half an hour to get home. Zhang Shiyi lay down in bed after taking a shower, and Tang Yi's reply appeared in the ERP system with a beep from his mobile phone. She has read it, and has no other comments, and has been submitted to the editor-in-chief. A series of signs indicate that Tang is also very satisfied with this manuscript. In fact, when Zhang Shiyi finished writing the first draft, he already had a good idea in his mind and he was full of confidence. He could already predict the surge in sales of this journal and the surge in reading of the online edition. She rolled over, propped her chin, dangled her legs, and gradually smiled on her face. Everything is fine. Just counting the days with his fingers, Xi'an's progress seemed to slow down. As the weather changed drastically, Zhang Shiyi's face collapsed again, and he sighed lowly. It would be great if it could be added to Xi'an's WeChat. Unlike now, she is bald every day to get close to the feast. This man is also true. When he met her for the first time, he took the initiative to strike up a conversation with her. Why did he stop acting because of her refusal? Do you have to wait for her to confess? Thinking about this question, Zhang Shiyi gradually fell asleep. The next day, she really received good news. The editor-in-chief likes her manuscript very much, and has returned directly to Xi'an, waiting for his final review. People are very refreshed at happy events. When Zhang Shiyi went to the company the next day, he met several colleagues along the way. Both men and women praised her for her appearance today. When he reached a place with heating, Zhang Shiyi took off his jacket and put it on his hands. The shoulders of the shirt were decorated with a shallow layer of tassels. With her footsteps, the light was shattered, and she walked all the way to the workstation with wind. Qin Shiho came a minute earlier than her. When she was applying hand cream, she looked up when she heard movement. Although she was very reluctant to admit it, her gaze stayed on Zhang Shiyi involuntarily for several seconds. Look at her hair, look at her face, look at her waist and hips, look at her smooth and slender legs. After regaining consciousness, 
Qin Shihu turned around and continued to apply hand cream with his back to Zhang Shiyi. Zhang Shiyi happily waited all morning, and Min Jiehe finally replied. She opened the mail excitedly. Fail. There are only a few comments. The situation was unexpected, but Zhang Shiyi made a round according to the content of the email. The feedback from the next day was sent, but it still failed. Zhang Shiyi was not calm at first, and faintly felt something was wrong. When she failed for the third time, she went directly to Tang Yi. What do you mean? Now if you don't give me any direct opinions, you just fail. Tang Yi couldn't help it, in the first interview, I didn't have experience with him. I didn't know that he was so demanding. After speaking, she sneered, didn't you say that he likes you better? A restless sigh of air was bouncing in Zhang Shiyi's heart, and there was an uncomfortable feeling of inexplicability, which made it difficult for her to accept the result calmly. Zhang Shiyi's eyes flashed, and after a moment of silence, he said, Editor-in-Chief, can you call me Xi'an? Tang Yi raised his eyes and looked up and down Zhang Shiyi, what do you want to do? I asked him to ask in person. Before Tang Yi could think about Zhang Shiyi's motives, the face-faced man leaned forward, frowning, with a pitiful look. Sister Yi, just give me his phone number. It's been several times. If it doesn't, there will be no time. Tang Yi wanted to refuse, but his arm was suddenly hugged, and he shook it back and forth twice. Speak well and act spoiled. Tang Yi frowned and took out his mobile phone. You can ask carefully to see if you have offended others. Zhang Shiyi wanted to know the answer more eagerly than Tang Yi. After receiving Shi Yan's call, he immediately went to the quiet balcony. However, this afternoon, Zhang Shiyi called three times, all of which were busy. She sat at the desk, staring at the mobile phone on the desktop. With a few thousand dollars of mobile phone, I couldn't receive a reply in a daze. Lei Xianxian outside the window was shocked and Zhang Shiyi suddenly returned to his senses. Looking around, all his colleagues were off work, and she was the only one who was still here. Zhang Shiyi's heart suddenly moved, picking up the bag and leaving the company. When preparing to take a taxi in the elevator, Zhang Shiyi chose the latter without hesitation between Min Jiehu's headquarters and Xi'an's home. The black clouds are like ridges and ridges, and the city is breathless, and the rainy weather at any time makes the footsteps of all passers-by become hurried. Zhang Shiyi didn't bring an umbrella, and along the way, he was worried that there would be a torrential rain like the day she and Yu Xing Zhou broke up. But she didn't seem to be so unlucky today. At least she had just arrived at Bogong Yunwan and registered for a visit. When she walked downstairs, Xi'an's car appeared. The car had slowly stopped and Zhang Shiyi seemed to be completely distracted, completely unaware of it. The person in the back seat did not speak, and the driver did not say anything, waiting quietly. The sky was gloomy, the street lights hadn't turned on yet, and the lights in the lobby on the first floor only took care of one corner of the eaves. Shi Yan turned his head and looked at the bright spot through the car window. Zhang Shiyi lowered his head to think about something, motionless, standing alone under the dim light, but still had a sense of uprightness. In their line of business, dressing and dressing are always required to be dignified and serious, but there is no way someone can put a shirt and pencil skirt in a graceful posture. The wind blew the leaves suddenly, and the mottled shadow awakened Zhang Shiyi. She raised her eyes and saw that the car that saw Xi'an stopped in front, and there was a dazzling light in her eyes. The privacy film of the car window is like a single-sided mirror. People outside cannot see what is inside, but people inside can clearly see the outside. Shi Yan retracted his gaze, took off his glasses, lowered his head and wiped the lenses. When he put on his glasses again and got out of the car, Zhang Shiyi had already walked to the car. Shi Yan stood in front of him, without speaking, just looking straight at her, waiting for her to speak. Some people seem to be smiling, but in fact they are panicked and have no idea what to say. Is it too strong to say what do you think of me? What if they really are? Can't give him this opportunity. 
In the quiet residential area, there is only the sound of the breeze blowing leaves. A few seconds later, Shi Yan seemed to run out of patience. After looking at the watch, he put one hand in his pocket and looked at the person in front of him condescendingly, What's the matter? Zhang Shiyi suddenly looked up at him and blinked. I think you might want to see me, so I came to you. The street lights suddenly lit up one after another, and the light shrouded in the sky clearly illuminated the fine fluff on Zhang Shiyi's face. After a brief silence, Shi Yan did not speak, but smiled. This was the first time Zhang Shiyi saw him smile. Although the smile was inexplicable. 